Well, none of them can hide from the truth, yeah. Children have to go back to the roots, yeah. None of them can hide from the truth, yeah. Children have to go back to the roots. I'm telling you now, the truth, the truth. Telling you, yeah, yeah, the truth, the truth. You have to go back to the roots, the roots. Go to the roots, to the roots. Yeah, man, you know, this is Benjamin out of the Smiling Coast, West Africa, Gambia, represent. Presenting for the one and only Abu, the big man you don't know, the son in care warrior, the man that brings the truth, son in care warrior, the sign of enlightenment, the son in care warrior, the righteous and the true African. Abu, reveal the truth to them, you know, no matter how them try run from it, because none of them can hide from the truth, yeah. Yes, we have to dig back the roots, yeah. Fire! Subscribe now. Africa is not our home. Let me let that hang in the atmosphere for a while. I said at this gathering of the masters, Africa is not your home. It's not our home. Africa, as it is called today, is our throne. And from that throne, we ruled our home, which is 196,940,000 square miles of the planet Earth. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Afridamos Report. I'm your host, Afridamos. I want to welcome all of you to today's edition of the Afridamos Report. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're doing well. Please make sure you hit the like button as you're coming in because that helps bring other people in. Happy Black History Month. We are back here again, you know, celebrating Black History Month. Remember I told you guys. The whole of February is Black History Month. But you see, the Black History Month is centered and revolves around, around slave story, slave history. But I want to bring stories, stories where revolutionaries have actually won. Because, you know, for the re people that say they are repats, repatriating, going to Africa, the Pan-Africans, they might be going to a lot of these places. They don't know the history of these places. They probably share the same common history, but because their lack of knowing and understanding of that place, then they are confused. Like yesterday, you guys have heard some of the people here even deny that, you know, um, colonization even ever happened. So, we had, I'm going to speak about Nat Turner, not the Nat Turner from yesterday, the real Nat Turner. Nat Turner was a slave that was born in a plantation. The reason why I'm speaking about Nat Turner, because Nat Turner and John Okello, the man I'm going to be speaking about today, have something in common. They have lots of similarities. It seems like when Nat Turner's spirit left his body, it reappeared in John Okello. They both have Christian backgrounds and they truly believe in their, in the, in their Christian doctrine. They believe that they were sent 
to free not only themselves, but their fellow blacks. So this is why today we're going all the way to the island of Zanzibar. We are going to be transversing East Africa, Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, and Zanzibar. You see, I've heard some people try to argue before, saying, did the Arabs ever enslave Africans? Unless you have been hiding under the rock. But not only did they not enslave Africans in their own countries, they, in fact, some of the Arabs enslaved Africans in black Africa. I'm talking majority within black Africa. Africans, have you ever guys, have you guys ever thought about it? It's kind of weird when you look at world geography, right? It's only in Africa, like you would see, okay, among a sea of black people, there would be like a different race, like whites, for example. And they would claim that, no, this is our country, right? Or some of colored Africans, Africans, and they would say, yeah, we are the origins of this place. So Zanzibar, as you may know, Zanzibar is part of Tanzania. This place is home of the, Bant, you know, some East African Bantus. They own that territory. They've been there, you know, Lord knows however long. But these Arabs, there were Arabs who were trading, coming from Oman. They were just like the Portuguese because they were collaborating. They, they traded with each other. They understood. Today, I want you to wake up and understand, like, if you look at a lot of these other races, let's say whites, you know, Arabs and others. So they all, they would come, quote unquote, and conquer Africans because they have information and they have weaponry. They've discussed it, right? They come, they conquer the Africans, enslave them and use their resources. And then they would go back and write in their books about how low IQ the Africans are, how the Africans are less than human. But we would find out with the story of John, John Okello, John Okello, by any standard, our standard today even, John Okello would be considered a pookie by any standard. And once we get into this story, you would understand why there, they, there is uh, this fight, this fight against ever allowing pookies to even join the police force, the military, and all that. You will understand. Because to be able to pull off what he pulled off, he only a pookie can pull that off. So I'm not talking about just the dusty pookies that you guys are used to. He was a useful pookie, and you're going to see that. So now, my question to you is, did the Arabs enslave Africans? How did those Arabs end up in Zanzibar? I bet you, you probably have been wondering. Well, they colonized that area. They colonized those Bantus. Even though their skin color might look a little bit closer, but that area was still colonized until a man named John Okello. John Okello came from Uganda and ended up in Zanzibar. But prior to that, he was in Kenya. But I don't want to hold you up. Let me give you the story. Because they are trying to erase John Okello out of history. Because they don't want anybody, any black African, or any downtrodden people to copy what he did. Just like Natana, from the slave plantations. You know, there are people making the argument to say that Nat Turner never existed. Mind you, when Nat Turner went from plantation to plantation and slaughtered those who 
kept him in captivity, him and his people, right? Okay, we can sit here and try to romanticize or play semantics and say, okay, that was the law, but who passed the law? Who decided that Nat Turner, you know, who decided that he was slave? How did he end up in that plantation? But despite being born there, he became awakened. He became awakened to the fact that, no, he is not a slave. He should not be in this condition. Don't forget, it was other human beings that made their law and decided that Nat Turner and others were slaves. They are like, okay, we own them legally. But now, the person that you say you own, the only way that would work is if mentally you dominate them. But what if the person did not accept it mentally? It's like having a lion in a circus. The day that lion realizes that they are not, you know, just about entertainment you're going to have a problem. That's what happened with the story of Nat Turner. So Nat Turner, they wanted him erased from history. People are even arguing, no, Nat Turner never existed. It was made up. That's what they said. But now we have a similar individual in the name of uh, John Okello. They want to wipe John Okello also away, you know, out of history because he pulled off similar thing. He went and freed. He succeeded in his move. He succeeded in his move, but the story still ends in a, you know, not in a happy way, but in a, okay, let me, let me rephrase it. Let, let me rephrase this one. So people like when you go to Zanzibar, you will not see any sign that this man ever even existed. But for you as a black person to be able to freely roam in Zanzibar is thanks to him. He was able to stand up to the Arab tyrants, those who practice Arab supremacy, putting the Africans in chains, as you see. I mean, this went on for hundreds of years, all the way in the early, I'm talking all the way in the 60s, until John Okello put a stop to it. So he is the father of all the Pukis. So some of you are probably wondering why I'm all iced up today. I'm responding to uh, a viewer. Let, let me answer that here quick. You know who you are. Let me read your message that you sent in my inbox. Hey, Afridamus. Okay, I've been enjoying your show, but you seem to be a bit biased because during White History Month, you, dre you were dressed the whole time like a white European person. And sometimes, most of the time, if you're not dressed like white European person, you wear that garb of yours with the fake cheetah prints. Sir, first of all, let me address you, sir or ma'am. That is not a garb. I just want to make it clear. And it's not a costume either. And it is not fake cheetah prints on it. This is what I've been saying. Some of these people are just haters. But let me continue. But you see, Afridamus, now it is Black History Month. Oh, so you was afraid. You are afraid of representing the real, the real street niggas. I bet you, you will not ice up and come on camera. Well, little did you know, I'm, I hope you're watching. You see me? I'm all iced up. Guys, if you want to send me messages, don't act like you're trying to one-up me. It's not that 
you know, I'm trying, I'm dressing like European or whatsoever. I'm here to represent all of you. So today, this here is dedicated to all the pookies of the world. That's why I'm all eye stop. You know, I hope you that wrote me that message, I hope you are happy. No, I'm not afraid to be to ice up. You know, it just depends on who I'm representing that day. And please fix your language when you are speaking about my beautiful African clothes, talking about fake cheetah prints. What's wrong with you? All right, here we go. Now that I got that out of the way, let's do our fair usage here. And then let's look at what the Arabs in Zanzibar did to the Africans to, 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 warrant, to warrant the action of John Okello. Let me do my fair usage here and we'll enter straight into it. At about 3 a.m. off the coast. It's January the 12th, 1964. At about 3 a.m. off the coast of East Africa is the tiny Indian Ocean archipelago of Zanzibar. This island nation has been ruled by minority Omani Arabs for generations. Under their rule, they have treated majority Africans as third class citizens who. Did you guys hear this? So it was minority Arabs who ruled over majority Africans. And they were practicing, you know, Arab supremacy on the Africans. Okay? So here we go. A worthless. Years of discontent and struggle have led to this moment. Tonight, Africans have had enough. A group of 200 African revolutionaries armed with bows and arrows are staging a surprise attack at Ziwani Police Amara. They overrun the guards obtaining arms and weapons. With the newfound weapons, the men mount a surprise resistance that cripples Sultan Jamshid bin Abdullah's police and government. Repeated bursts from automatic rifles echo through the narrow and winding streets of the capital. One Guys, you see how how things change? You know how all these people that talk about they've been around African, African, they conquered Africans because the Africans were not smart. I keep telling them it's because Africans did not lay their hands on guns, the same guns you have. If they lay hands on the guns you have, the tide will change. So these Africans, they rose up, they had enough, just like the man said in the beginning. They've had enough. But you see, John Okello, John Okello himself, you know, he was he, when he left Kenya and came to Zanzibar, he was in the police force. So these Omanis, the Arabs there, the Sultan, as the man that was the title, they had the black Africans in the police force as well. Which, is, which was pretty silly of them. So they had African enforcers not realizing these Africans will one day turn against them. But here we, they had African enforcers on their plantations. That's the center of Arab slave trade in East Africa. After six hours of fighting, strategic buildings on the island's capital are seized. The cable office, airstrip, and the radio station all come under the rebels' control. With these strategic gains, they use the radio to send a message to the Sultan and his family. 
In a speech on the radio, the Sultan is given an order to kill his family and himself afterwards, or else the man passing the message will do it himself. So what they are saying here, when John Okello and his men took over and conquered the Omanis on Zanzibar, the message he sent on the radio to the Sultan, he said he wants the Sultan to kill his entire family and kill himself when he's done. He said if the Sultan doesn't do it, he will do it himself. So these guys were not playing. John Okello is, was a pissed off man. He is very pissed at the Africans being enslaved. So he wants this man to wipe himself out. Not only himself, but his family too. The man broadcasting this order is John Gideon Okello, the leader of the revolutionaries. He uses this moment to also brand himself to the world as the Field Marshal of Zanzibar and Pemba. As dawn breaks, the international community wakes up in shock at the successful of... So guys, you see this, right? If this wasn't written in newspapers, they would have just said, no, John Okello never existed. They would say he never did exist. And you would, you would see why they, they would want him to be, you know, forgotten. Because an, just an ordinary pookie getting pissed off and making this big change, they don't want that to be the message out there. But in Black History Month, we have to, you know, let people know the story too. Here we go. Overthrow of the Sultan of Zanzibar. With news spreading like wildfire, it sends shockwaves throughout the continent. Scared, Sultan Jamshid, who had replaced his father less than a month after he died, didn't wait for the field marshal to deliver on his threats. Together with the prime minister and members of the cabinet, they flee the island on the royal yacht, just out of range of the rebel guns, heading to Oman. In Oman, he is denied permission to settle. So he flies to Britain with 61 rebels. So you see, he went to Oman. See, they wouldn't, they wouldn't accept him back. So like people telling those South African boys, you got to go back to the Netherlands. They will not accept them back. It's been way too long. So he had to go, go to the British to go live with the British. But as you can see clearly, right? When the people you are oppressing and you think they are stupid, that's why you're oppressing them. If they get hold of those guns that you have, you see, I mean, the Sultan can't even believe his slaves turned against him. Because at the time, the Africans, mind you, this is in Africa, Tanzania, you know, the place they call Zanzibar, off the coast there. Even on their own land, they were not even three-fifths human. They were below three-fifths. They had zero power. Zero power. So basically slaves. So they have the African as the slave class. And you will see um, John Okello, who prior to this was hanging out with the Mau Maus in Kenya. He was locked up with the Mau Maus. You will see why they locked him up. And he hated the British too. But let's continue. Relatives, friends, and household staff. After the successful execution of the revolution, there was widespread surprise about the person of the tough-talking 27-year-old field marshal, John Gideon Okello. In one of his broadcasts, he tells the freedom fighters looting that if anyone is caught with a stolen bar of soap, he will be imprisoned for eight years. In Kenya, Ari reports by Kenyan newspapers hold him as a Kenyan citizen. But who exactly was Field Marshal John Gideon Okello? How did he end up being the face of the 1964 Zanzibar Revolution? And why was he the most feared man across East Africa? Guys, did you know this John Okello 
Some of you might call him a pookie. This guy at the time was the most feared man in East Africa. The most feared man in East Africa. And I think he was only like 27 years old. Even Idi Amin was scared of this guy. And he was a little guy too. Feared even by people like Idi Amin. Well, let's find out. The man who would become the face of the Zanzibar revolution wasn't even born Zanzibari. In fact, he is Ugandan, born in the northern district of Lango in what was then the Uganda Protectorate. It is the 6th of October 1937. Okello and his wife Elwal Akuro give birth to their fifth child. This child will be lucky since 10 out of their 13 children would succumb to illness. At two, they baptize him as Gideon and give him a Langon name, Ituku, meaning we have hope he will live to help us parents. As a child, Okero diligently works with his father herding goats and cattle to make ends meet. At so he was a goat and a cattle harder. So those of you that make fun of you know, goat harder and cattle harder, there's something you're about to learn here. Seven. The young Okello is fascinated by the military after interacting with World War II soldiers who had come home on leave. This interaction inspires him to join the army. However, he is turned down for being a miner after walking 45 kilometers to the recruitment center. At 10, tragedy struck in Okello's life when his mom passed away while giving birth. The following year, his father followed due to a stomach illness. Devastated, Okello went on to live with his uncle, where he faced abuse and mistreatment, pushing him to be industrious from an early age. To escape his abusive uncle, he left home to seek various opportunities in present-day East Africa, aged 15. He did so, by age 15, he was out there hustling. He was in, you know, pitying himself. He came from the village, right? So equivalent, you know, like a small upcountry town. So now he's in the big city, hustling at 15. He tried to join the army, but he was too young. They wouldn't take him. Now he's out here getting his money however way possible. All kinds of jobs from being a clerk, manservant, gardener, and other odd jobs in Uganda, Kenya, and Tanganyika. Later, going through training to become a professional bricklayer. In October 1954, Okello relocates to Nairobi in search of better work. While there, he is arrested on allegations of rape and imprisoned for two years. So this, is, this was British Nairobi in the 60s. So the white people, like you guys remember King of Travel came here. He said he didn't believe colonization happened. So... Um, and maybe I hope you're watching King of Travel. You can see here these buildings, and this is back in the 60s. You know, um, the white people built, this is their buildings. And, you know, the British. The British were the ones that put John Okello in prison and said he committed rape. And that pissed him off. He hated the British for that. In prison, he endures torture alongside Mau Mau prisoners and detainees. It is this experience that cultivates in him a strong hatred and detest against the British. The young Okello leaves Kenya in 1959 in a small boat for the small island of Pemba, risking his life. He found work on farms and other kinds of handwork on the island. It is here that he comes face to face with active politics. He joins the Zanzibar Nationalistic Party, the predecessor of the Afro Shilas Party, led by Sheikh Obed Karume. So, they have the, the these are the Arab Afros, I guess the mixed ones. So they they set up their own party to challenge the quote unquote full Arabs. So Okelo comes and joins them. Mind you, don't forget he is not even from there. So he was. He came from Uganda, 
you know, just this man is just facing hardship upon hardship. I mean, it's, I would guess for a young man, even today, it's the same way, right? He moves around, goes to Nairobi. I guess back in those days, you know, Nairobi was the spot to be. And the British, you know, somehow, you know, you, you, when you, you know, back in those days, I guess the young man, every young man they see, you, you know, it's a threat to them because they had the Mau Mau revolution happening, which would also, I would do that show here. So they said he committed rape. Once he finished up his, his time in prison, he was tortured in prison on top of that. He boarded a small boat for the island of Zanzibar, right? Eventually joined the party. The man came with a motive because he couldn't fight the British in, in Kenya. But mind you, he hated the British with passion. So from that time on, you know, um, like the Mau Mau, their fight was also against the British. So... Obviously, being a village boy, I bet he learned, you know, uh, he he got more indoctrinated. And whatever he experienced in that prison made him just hate colonizers. And he was acting on that. Which mainly advocated for the overthrow of the oppressive Arab rule. As a member of the ASP, Okello delivered speeches attributed to Arabs and encouraged people to raise up like the Mau Mau in Kenya and Majimaji in Tanzania. In 1961, the party made Okello the youth secretary for Pemba. In the position, he would travel around Zanzibar and Pemba delivering more speeches at union branches and organizing a revolution to overthrow the Sultan. Guys, you know what the uh, Natona, what Natona, who was born on a slave plantation, the man that led slave revolution, guess what he, he also used to do with his master? They traveled from plantation to plantation. You know, Natona, his master takes him with him for him to preach the Bible because he knew the Bible so much. I guess he was a great speaker. So Okello here sounds like he was a great, you know, a speaker too. So he was picked. They would travel from community to community on the island where he would deliver speeches. That's what Natona also used to do. That helps you understand the interaction with people to help to get people on your side. And somehow he was able to pull that off. And slowly but sure, careful in his steps, he turned his followers into a small resilient army of determined African nationalists who had to adhere to strict rules like sexual abstinence, burning raw meat and alcohol. One should note that even with all this, Okello is not among the most popular leaders in Zanzibar, fighting against the Arabs at the moment. The few mainstream politicians who were known to the public included the leader of the Afro Shirazi Party, Obed Karume, and Abdul Rahman Muhammad, also known as Babu, the founder and leader of the radical Ummah Party. So both these people still look Arab, right? So I guess they are the the mixed ones, the buffer class. So it's always the dark skin that comes and clear the way and the mix light skin moves in in this type of situations so let's find out what these you know afro arabs end up doing each of the three had a plot to overthrow the government but it was okelo's plan which was far more advanced decisive and which struck the blow that brought down the sultan's regime the strength of Okello's strategy was supported by the fact that a majority of Africans on the Zanzibar island were poor, uneducated, and lived in an informal setting. It is these everyday disgruntled Zanzibaris that Okello targeted and appealed to using informal methods. When the appeal came, they were all ready to join him. 
When he claimed that he had been given orders in his dreams by God to break the powerful position of the Arabs in Zanzibar and Pemba, more masses followed. It is did day, the night of the attack, when before the attack, Okello gives his men orders telling them to kill all Arabs between the age of 18 and 25 years, to spare pregnant and elderly women, and not to rape virgins because it would bring bad luck. So the rib So guys as you can hear Okello was not playing he he came for blood So um I mean I'll open the panels later I want to hear what you guys think about what Okello did should they erase him off history or keep him his story going but he wants his men to be disciplined he he was in playing around. So here we go. Was strike at exactly three. So people that talk about, oh, revolution, revolution. Well, you see how it's done. This is how it's done. It's not a, you would never cry your way to winning. You have to pull off a jo an okelo if you are oppressed. AM. Breaking into the police and the government armor, stealing hundreds of automatic rifles and submachine guns. They seized the cable office, cutting all outside communication. Within six hours, the town's telegraph office and the main government buildings are all under revolutionary control. By 2 p.m., the island's only airstrip is captured with no plane allowed to lift off or land. In the countryside, fierce fighting erupts between the rural Arabs known as the Manga and the Africans. Arabs, poorly armed, mainly with hunting rifles, put up a fight. But with the new arms seized from the police stations and reinforcements, the Arabs are doomed. It was a slaughter. So, you know, the fight now became, was between the Arabs and the Africans. Because John Okello created the line, they attacked the police stations, now they were well armed. They had weapons, you know, before they didn't have any, right? So they were docile, they didn't have weapons. But once they got the weapons, and the Arabs had the inferior weapons, all of a sudden, John Okello and his men became the superior party. And the Arabs did not stand a chance against them. On the run, the Sultan's palace and other properties are seized by the revolutionary government. After 12 hours of fighting, at least 80 people were killed and 200 injured, the majority of whom were Arabs. The scenes were gruesome, with battered bodies of Arab men lying on the streets with their genitals severed and shoved into their mouths. After capturing Stone Town, revolutionaries fought for control over the countryside for two more days, killing whole families of Arabs after storming their homes. Sounds brutal, guys, but that's what happened in a revolution. Because, see, when you enslave a group of people, and if they rise up against you and try to, you know, try to free themselves forcefully, man, if you are part of the class that enslaved them, man, you don't stand a chance because. I mean, you have to remember for hundreds of years, they didn't see these people as human, dehumanized them. So once they took power, the way they're going to return the favor, you know, wasn't pretty at all. In the aftermath, a revolutionary council is established by the ASP and Umma party, with Obed Karume as president and Babu serving as the Minister of External Affairs. The country is renamed the People's Republic of Zanzibar and Pemba. The Sultan is permanently banished and never to return. As for Okero, Karume quietly sidelines him from the political scene, although he is allowed to retain his self-bestowed title of Field Marshal. Okero formed the Free... Do you guys think Okello and his men were too brutal on the Arabs? 
that should, that would be the question. I want you guys to answer it when you come up here. Do you guys think that, that they were way too brutal? They should have shown some mercy. Just just a question. Let's continue. Dom military force a paramilitary unit made up of his own supporters, which patrolled the streets and looted Arab property, carrying out beatings, rapes, murders, and attack on people's property. Okello would put up a show after his victory, showing praise for himself for how he pulled off the siege. So, Okello, being the pookie that he is, pookies can never stop being pookies. It doesn't matter which era. So, he pulled this good thing off, so now, he, you know, it's sort of, now he's about to sing a rap lyrics. Because that's, you know, in whatever you pull off, you come and, you know, give yourself accolade. So, you know, he's going to come give himself praises on the work that he did and the things he can do. And sometimes, you know, um, people like him or bookies, they tend to exaggerate the things they can do. And that can scare some people. But here we go. He made gross exaggerations to exaggerate the magnitude of his strength and his army's conquest. For days, the main news out of Zanzibar came from a remarkable series of radio broadcasts to the people by John Okello. He once announced that he had been the strong man behind the revolution and that the government was now, quote, run by us, the army, he went ahead to add, we, the army, have the strength of 99 million, 99,000. Should anyone be stubborn and disobey orders, I will take very strong measures, 88 times stronger than at present. I was very high-ranking person in Kenya, in the Mau Mau army, which knows how to make weapons. So, so John Okello, after he did that, okay, um, so... Someone is right. I movement said Arabs castrated most of their slaves during the 1300 year history of slave trading. Yeah, I mean, I think maybe that's why John Okello and his men, for that reason, the symbol they were, you know, mutilating, you know, these people's genitalia and sticking it in their mouth as a symbol of what they did to the Arabs used to do to the African slaves, I guess. But this man here, his orders, he gives them directly. And he's letting them know he held a high-ranking position with the Mau Maus because, you know, the Mau Maus they were no joke. So he said, if you try him, like if you, if you do nine, he would do 100 to you. So people took him serious. I can easily make not less than 500 guns per day. Undoubtedly, I can make a bomb that can destroy an area of three square miles. I can make about a hundred grenades in an hour. With the days passing after the revolution, Okello continued his broadcasts and his fantasies about himself, and his might grew equally. On one occasion, he declared, quote, I'm above the government and cannot die. See, bookies are their own worst enemies. So John Okello could not just chill. So he wanted his own army. Basically, he wanted to just be a gang leader. And saying that he's above the government, you know, like, come on, you know, the government probably is like, all right, we have to draw the line here, you know, because this man is getting too crazy. So here we go. These broadcasts created an image of the new revolutionary government as being extremist and unstable. As you could predict, he was becoming a threat to the new administration of Obed Karume. The behavior of Akelo's supporters, his violent rhetoric, Ugandan accent, and Christian beliefs alienated many in a largely Muslim moderate Zanzibar. By so he had a, a, a Ugandan accent, so he's not even from there. So they started thinking like, all right, um, he's not even from here. Why is he, you know, causing problems? Even though he helped, he helped save the place before they didn't care about his accent. But now 
they are like, man, he's got the Ugandan accent. They, they have a problem with it. Much, many of the members of his militia had been disarmed by Karume's supporters and the Huma Party militia. It is from Okelo's irrational character and his love for the limelight that the leader of the Afro Shilas party and other allies who had joined Okelo to form the new government plotted his expulsion. Careful not to anger his followers and mercenaries who terrorized the streets of Zanzibar, Karume hatched a plot to deal with Okelo once and for all while he traveled to mainland Tanganyika as he regularly did. It is the 11th of March 1964. An East African Airways Flight 304 approaches the main airport on the island. As it touches the runway, a message flashes ahead. It is I, the field marshal, who comes. Have my army and press waiting. However, today, there will be no army waiting. But Obed Karume, the leader of the Afro Shilas party and his peers, are waiting with a banishment order. So Okello used to fly around, I guess. If he's coming, he wants them to bring, send his own private army to come and meet him as he lands on the airport. So this time around, you know, um, politicians anywhere. So they had a dirty plan against him. Watch, watch how, how they about to do him. They, they did him dirty. Upon arrival in Zanzibar, Karume tells the field marshal he is not needed in Zanzibar anymore. Field marshal John Gideon Okelo's downfall begins at this moment. Returning to mainland Tanga. Guys, please make sure you hit the like so that, you know, the uh, <clears throat> algorithm can bring more people in to come and watch the show. Please hit the like. It's free. Here we go. Okelo held a press conference saying, Don't just sit there and pretend like you're not enjoying the show hit the like and let us continue that he had been dismissed as the field marshal of zanzibar revolution and banished by the island's revolutionary government when asked about his next plans he said i have no money and no plans except to return to my village in uganda and take up my former job as a bricklayer okelo's fall resulted from the very thing he believed he had created the Zanzibar Revolution. Barely two months after the revolution, he had become a pariah. In just one week, he had been barred from Zanzibar, escorted out of Tanganyika, expelled from Kenya, and left with the equivalent of 21 cents in his pocket. Guys, you see what happened to him? Within a week, all these things happened to Okello. The people he freed, you know, um, they deported him from Zanzibar to mainland Tanzania, used to be called Tangayinka. They expelled him. He couldn't go back to Kenya either because you remember in Kenya, even before he pulled this off, the, the British saw him as a very dangerous person, put him in prison. Then after his term, he went to Zanzibar toppled an entire system so kenya is like no he can't come to kenya so the only other place he can go to is his village because they cannot reject him they have to accept him and he's gonna be going back broke when the field marshal okelo was forced to leave nairobi an ethiopian admirer brought him a small french sedan worth 2420 us dollars See, Ethiopians are real Pan-Africanists. It was an Ethiopian that stepped in and at least gave him, you know, bought him a car, you know, gave him a car that he can own. The Ethiopian just admires his, his hard efforts. He went back to being a Puki right away, within a week. But thanks to the Ethiopian, he got a car. It then developed that Okero could not drive. So... A local bar attender was rounded up to drive him to the Ugandan border. Halfway there, they ran out of fuel, stuck by the roadside with a new car and only 21 cents in cash. Marshal Okello stopped a passerby and borrowed $14 for fuel to get across the border. 
Uganda was the only place in East Africa open to him. The country did so only because no one else wanted him. Hey, they said, you know, can the whole world reject you? They can try, but there's only one place that cannot reject you. The place where you come from. So only Uganda, only Uganda would take him in because that's where he was from. And they also took him in because they have no choice because he came from there. So here we go. You see, even in his defeat, the four East African countries still feared Okello. They viewed him as a security risk because of his singular hold on the illiterate, impoverished and discontented masses. If Okello got to this group of people in these countries, the leaders feared that he could be the spark that could ignite a tinderbox. His travels and movements were always monitored around the region with no breathing space at all. He spent the rest of his life in and out of prison, accused by governments of Kenya, Uganda and Tanzania of conspiring against them. In November 1964, even Hastings Banda accused him of planning to overthrow Malawi's government. The so John Okello became a felon in East Africa. So all these governments, you know, keep accusing him, you know, Tanzania, Kenya, even Malawi. They just keep accusing him. He became a felon. They didn't trust him. Uganda he returned to was also grappling with the crisis under Obote. He was last publicly seen in 1971 with another emerging Ugandan field marshal, Idi Amin Dada. Meeting Amin, Okello said, Ever since I left Zanzibar in 1964, I have been robbed, mistreated, and imprisoned by the Obote regime. Wherever I went, I was followed like a dog by the general service unit and could never move freely as I am able now. It is September the 9th, 1973. John Okello is now back in Uganda, settling in. He has a wife and several children. Today, he plans to visit his brother in the nearby village of Amugo. He says goodbye to his wife and kids. Soon after he leaves, a group of men follow him. At around 4 p.m., while in Amugo, he is bundled up and arrested by these men. It's not clear who these men are but such arrests are common under Idi Amin's regime. A group of women and students returning from school witness the arrest. Okello waves at them and pleads to them to inform his family about his arrest. That would be the last day and time he was ever seen alive. This was all on the account of his wife, Miss Akao Okello. Field Marshal John Gideon Okello might have used his passion, wit, and energy to free the African people of Zanzibar from the grip of the oppressional minority Arab rule. But his legacy and name have not been pronounced as much. Instead, the country celebrated Obed Karume, its first president and leader of the Afro Shiraz party that benefited from Okello's revolution and finally punished him. To repatriate his position, Karume allied with Tanganyika's Julius Nyerere to form a political federation of Zanzibar and Tanganyika, becoming present-day Tanzania. Karume was assassinated in April 1972, shot by four gunmen as he played a board game at the headquarters of the Afro Shirazi party. In Zanzibar, John Okello has been forgotten. No buildings or airports or roads are named after him. Regardless of his mistakes and charisma, his contribution to Zanzibar's revolution will live on, for if it wasn't for his decisive actions, maybe the history of this small island nation would be different today. If there is anything Okello would have loved most, it is his title of Field Marshal. That is something I cannot take away from him. Guys, that was... The story of John Okello, 
So I'm gonna I drop the link, hit the link, come on through, let's have the discussion about John Akello here. I have a caller already here. Kirola, welcome to the Afridamas Report. Yeah, for that one, thank you, man, for having me, man. I'll be here shortly before I go to bed. Oh, for that one, you see, Africans are warriors. You see, you can you can tell that whenever a dark Africans want to do something, they do with a full mind, a full blue mind. I was watching your show yesterday before I fell asleep. Oh, oh, Judah, yeah. Judah, 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 I don't understand what is going on with Cameroonians, man. You know, let's put that aside. Do you think they would need like a, a John Okello to come and help them from uh, Paul Bia to help them too? <laughs> I don't think so. You see, Omar, because of the long time service of Omar in Zanzibar, Omar himself even become Miss. Omar has yeah. some African blood inside them a lot. You can see they're darker than the other Saudi Arabians and everything. What they right. were doing, they were dealing with. They were dealing with the Africans' men, cast, you know, castrated them. That why they picking their women as their wives. That's what they were doing. So, so you do know? you think uh, the story of John Okello, and you know, do you think he was way too angry at the Arabs, and um, he did not want to spare them. He wanted to wipe all of them out. Do you think he he went too it brought, far? He brought the angry that he saw them as light skin. Close to the British, right? So what he did, he unleashed that ugliness towards the Arabs. That will happen, and what the Arabs also doing to to the indigenous also, that will happen. That why it was very very brutal. His man was very very brutal. He himself become very brutal, my very wounded man. You are you are you familiar with the story of uh, Nat Turner? No, no, I don't know. Well, Nat Turner was a slave uh, in America in the plantation. His master used to take him around different plantations, you know, to, to preach the Bible because he knew the Bible very well. But then he had this awakening. So, you know, he, he, wanted, he wanted to be free. He said he started having these, you know, dreams, you know, for him to kill the, you know, the slave masters. And he went on a spree. You know, kill several of them, just like John Okello. Yeah, is I I don't know nothing about the America, the United States freedom fighters. Not at all. I learned a little bit about the the Asian ones and others. Oh no, his you know? his was just a small one in a plantation. It wasn't as big because you know it's like different different plantations. So it was being so so it was being suppressed immediately yes. quickly. Immediately quickly, so, yes, yeah, quickly. Yeah, so, yeah, but that is a symbol that the black Americans are supposed to be talking about. There's a guy like that, then them um, that, that's their symbol, you know, compared to other exactly uh, other Africans. But the, the 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 I was watching your show yesterday, man. I was very, very you see, I get really, really disappointed of uh, of that guy called Tantona, that sixty Who? years old man. Oh na oh and, not Tona. Yeah, you know. It's a yeah, what did you, what did you it's, think it's about? Like a, you know, it's a disgrace. A very big Judah and that guy, they all both the same in the same page. That hmm. guy's a very, it's a very big disgrace. That's why people don't take issue of Black Americans seriously in America. That but, is but, true. They take the but Native you, American more serious than the than Black Americans. But but he said he's not African. Did you not? Did you hear that part? Yeah, but yeah, but that's what Tariq Sheed is feeding them with. That's why they don't have voting choice. They cannot change political statement. They don't have. They cannot change anything. They just there to be controlled and tell what to do. And they all will just follow. Just that. Just what I see. It's a very big disgrace. I'm not so gonna so for example, you. Sweet Tea here is saying this story no, is this just guy, to say. This, it's just to say the Bantus are victim too, but the Bantus are not crying. The Bantus that, that did something that, about it. That, that, that is Somali guy crying there. Oh, he's Somali. He's Arab. I think it's a Somali guy. Arabs. Look, let me just. So, tell you so but why are they denying that the Arabs enslaved the Africans? The 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 Arabs enslaved the Africans in East Africa, the Kenyans and the Tanzanians. You can see where they took them to, all the way to the Indians. They even enslaved them to the Indians. That we can see them 
the Africans in the India jungle territory with the door of our freedom everywhere. I'm not surprised. Indians have freedom in Africa than the Africans that took down there to Indians who stay in the jungle, almost kind of being suppressed. You understand? Africans, when I mean Africans, because when I mean dark sub-Saharan Africans, they have to understand Arabs don't have anything good about them. Whatever if you're Muslim or not. Uh, you know, just the way Christian and everything is. So, so for example, the, you know, like uh, sweet tea, on Sweet Tea said, how did Nat Turner become slave in the first place? Oh, because West Africans enslaved his ancestors. So it always goes back to all. So he's saying yeah, he, is he's, us, a Somali, hmm? he's a Somali guy. Uh -huh. Or not Somali guy. Oh, oh he's, he's a Somali he's, guy? It, it might be Somali guy or this FB right. cut of a thing. You know, this guy oh. just is two ways. It's two people that are speaking there. The Somali guy. Or FB court, you know. Stand. So, Look, so since it's 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 Black History Month, the, we're talking about fight, the those fight of, Yeah, those are fight for freedom, know how to settle peace. Mm -hmm. You understand me? Africa will never be free by anybody. Africa free themselves for the oppressed and the degenerated of their race in Africa territory. So it's not like Africans. We Africans were begging for who to come and free us. We free ourselves. We know how to fight. Well, when I'm in Africa, we, I think that we sub Sahara know how to fight. West Africa is one of the most violent territory in the whole of Africa who's ready to die and uh, live for what they believe on. So, so, so this, this guy you're talking about, this John Kello, is a typical guy who ready to fight and he freed those people. He, he yeah. dismissed those, those Omanis away from that, you know, for that territory. Even when the Omanis were marrying their sisters and their mothers, but man was still dealing with their men Mercilessly, no pity, no nothing. You understand me? So, so, so they were so, like third class citizens. Even six class citizens. You understand me? Yeah, yeah. Because if you check, if you check the, it, it was after Kelo that the Tanzanians could know. That's what John but, you know, they become a little bit tougher. Yeah, but you see, so, so, Kidola, what you're saying there, this is good. You know how, like, you know, now you have all these people that travel around. Tanzania, like coming from America and the West. Because, you know, they like to say, oh, man, we paved the way for you in, in America. So, so shouldn't they be thankful to people like John Okello for Black Americans to be able to walk around in Zanzibar? Because he I'm gave he he gave the power to the Blacks in Zanzibar. I'm, I'm for Damas, dollar be this is not delusional. The Black Americans never really free themselves. The Black Americans was being given freedom by President uh, the, in 1964. You oh, you mean uh, Abraham Lincoln? Not the brand in 1964. What is this guy? Oh, 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 Lyndon B. Johnson. Yeah, the B. Johnson who just yeah. give them the right to vote. That's when they start experiencing freedom. In the 1920s, were they voted? No. Were they voted? They were not voted. You no, prior to they that, in the, they did in, vote. The, in the in the reconstruction era, the black men were able to vote. There were a lot of uh, uh, black, actually black uh, office holders during those times. Then it reversed for some reason. That, that, that's what I'm trying to tell you. So even in the United States, which citizen is being always been re renewing the constitution is a black american citizenship right you understand me they have to always renew it to the congress you understand so 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 the white people give black america freedom don't like the, 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 they are no warriors let me repeat it the black americans were never warriors who fight and win a battle they will be they will be freed or be given free. That's why up to today, they, you just check that 60 years old man, what he was saying out of his mouth. Disgrace. It's like a baby who's looking for the bottle to be fed up. Ah, oh, master, give me feed the bottle, please. I'm it, hungry. Do you have it, do you have pancake? You get what I'm saying? They were never warriors. He wants he wants uh, he wants to know if there's ice cream in, in, in Africa too. Yeah, what was the ice cream there? It's not talking about Africans are looking for their money. Africans are telling you they're not coming there because of you. If you go to American embassy, 
you don't see black America by the desk there. Africans that are going to the United States, they never even know nothing about black Americans. No, oh, oh, we're going to meet black Americans now. Hell no. It's a white, it's a white boy they're seeing. Most Africans that left Africa always have white people in their mind. You see, John Carlo, these are guys called warriors. Warriors. I believe because the black Americans never really freed themselves, they will be free by pen and paper. That's why they hate Africans and the Caribbeans. That you saw. You, you think, you think there's, a, there's a sense of jealousy there? That you, you, people that because, you know, you know, somebody like Okello would have been like just a pookie, but look at the big revolution he led and, and freed and freed a group of and freed an entire yeah. nation look that look you know is you see john carlos not making big mouth only if after, after the defeat he started making big mouth yes after the defeat that he started making big mouth but when yeah. he was fighting he didn't make no big mouth so yes. black americans are making big mouth against the africans because they know they never win no they never win no fight you understand me? It's okay that you be free by pen and paper. No problem about that. But you have to understand, they will also be isolated also. They never have no communication with the new slaves that are coming. Like the way the Caribbeans were doing. You understand? Yeah. So the Caribbeans will always replenish with Africans that are coming there as, as, uh, as, 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 as slaves. You get what I'm saying? That's why the Caribbeans could, could communicate with the power and the spiritual of those Africans that were coming. The black Americans will always be isolated in the farm zone. You get what I'm saying? They will yeah. be put in the farm zone. They will have farmers over there. They will mostly be used as a farmers over there as a slave farmers. But the Caribbean, even when they use them as a farmers, as you can came to work and die, but they will always be replenished back again by other new Africans that was arriving there. So they were selling these stories to the new Africans. These new Africans and the old Africans joined together to free themselves in the Caribbean. That's why you can see the Caribbeans have more warriors looking than the black Americans. That's just the truth. That's just the truth. So can uh, black America can, can black America handle suffering? Hell no. They're talking about low well, 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 you know, you know, yesterday the, the guy you're talking about, Nat Turner, he named himself after the revolutionary guy. Nat Turner, the you know, who I, I was speaking of, he's almost their characteristic, him and John Okello are alike. But John, Nat Turner wants ice cream. Do you think somebody who's crying about ice cream and snacks can fight a revolution? How can you, how can you, how can you fight, how can you fight a revolution when you're looking for pancake and sugar straw to eat on it? And peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And peanut butter and jelly sandwich. So that's what I'm telling you is, is just the truth that Africans free themselves. No, nobody could say, "Oh, we have to free you." We, you, 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 South Africa free themselves. They sacrifice their lives. No, but the blacks them. helped them. The blacks said they helped them. Who, who did they help? The South did Africans. They help, did they help themselves first of all to free themselves? No. Well, they, they are free, the they, they, they are the best blacks in the world. Look at, <laughs> best black for what? For Makijasi? No, I mean, like, they are the strongest black in the world. They freed you, you, themselves. You could, see what, you could see what that old man was saying. That's the old man was saying. You could see what the other guy, I don't know, King of Traveler was saying. It's like... Yeah, okay. You, 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 King of Travels travels around East Africa, right? So he said he didn't... He was doubting, you know, even uh, colonization happened. So, for example, um, even this John Okello story, I wonder what King of Travel would say. King King of Travel, if you're watching, call in. But but you know what, are you are you surprised when he said he don't believe that you know colonization happened because Africans loved white people? You you you, you know what you know yeah because you see that was said who fought Africa fought for freedom. Those that fought for war know how to keep peace. They don't want it to repeat again. Yes, Africa fought a war to free themselves, so they don't want anything to happen again. So they're not seeing their, uh, their enemies as enemies anymore, rather they are friends. Because the Black Americans never really fought any battle or win any battle, they start seeing everybody as enemies. They start hating the white people a lot. To us Africans, we don't do that. We see more like, let, we deal with you individually. You said because of this FBA, not all black Americans I'm talking about, but this FBA court and their believer, like that useless guy that kept that old man. 
who talk like a baby. You understand? You just give that guy five minutes out of his mouth. You just think this is a babe who looking for free the bottle. You know, you know what I'm saying? He said is don't you know what he said that he, he, he that that he deport a lot of black black other black people to black the immigrants. Yeah, that what he said. That yeah, what he, he said. He's just talking. He can deport anybody. You know, he doesn't you know, have so, the power. So, so you can see that they all liars. He can he can are, call eyes. Do you know? Do you know how hard it is to, to deport somebody from the United most, States, even if, Africa, even if they are illegal, as long as they if, don't commit if, a crime? If, if Africa, if, if, if Africans are accepting these FBA people, Africa have to build a very huge, gigantic metal head hall. Yeah, he doesn't know. Because, uh, that's why because, I was just listening because, to him. For, for because, because let's be honest, let's be honest, a lot of these black Americans have what called meta problems. Just, that's just the truth. If you bring them into your country, just build a mental institution to start treating them. Because you be, just check what that guy said. He was crying to the president of Ghana. Hey, yeah, who, I was in jail. Who, who uh, you talking about, Mick Mill? Yeah. Oh, yeah, he but Mick Mill, he said he's, he's bringing the hood to Ghana. He came to Ghana for him to express himself. He's not talking about, I went to jail. Who want to listen to his jail? That's a baby talk. First time meeting somebody talking about jail, I went to jail. You know why they see why they hate us? Why they hate us is because they want to be, they want to have that self-esteem because Africans don't give them. Because how can you deal with such a mother, a sixty-year-old man that is talking like a fool, saying uh, they were blacks in America before? You, you, you see, one thing I hate about why. In United States, that you can be whoever you want to be. No, 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 no. In Africa, you can never be what you want to be because if you, everybody say I'm a dog, I'm a cat, I'm a house. But in America, you can say, oh, I'm a light. Oh, you okay? You are light then, you understand? That is the funny thing that you see. Fantasy. Superman. Movies. Movies, fantasy. That will play out in United States. Movie fantasies. So, so Kidola, you know, do you think this story of John Okello, if we look deep, did the Somalis also enslave the Bantus there in that area? You see, the Somalis are the man, they were cooking together. And the Omanis, they, they work together? Yes. The dark Africans are the ones on the floor. Only that the dark Africans could not take it. Do you know why John Carlos succeed? Because John Carlos was John dealing Okello. with the dark yeah. Africans. Yes. John Okello was dealing with the dark Africans, not yeah. with the Miss Arabs. So what he did, he organized those dark Africans as a warriors. That's what he did. And the Somalis did not the Somalis did not come help him. Help <laughs> people that the Somalis are even sell as middlemen. That what you that what you should understand that he fought a battle with. A typical African person like him, but what happened? The Miss Arabs came slowly to take over the power. Right. That what happened. They chance him out because they in they know after those Arabs after Omar they will be the next. So they play you know crooked game on him. That was it's that sad. what really happened. Let's let's he, bring he, in the, let's bring in Rashid too. Rashid, are you there? Hello, Afridamas. Can you hear me? Rashid. Rashid, why did you guys enslave the Bantus? <laughs> First of all, let me say hello to you, uh, and hello to the uh, to the chat people in the chat, and also hello to Kidalo, uh, K Kidola. I mean, uh, you know, we or first let me correct my brother uh, Kidola. Let me correct him. So, uh, you know, in Africa we don't have light or or dark skin. We in Africa we have tribes. So Somalia, Somali people is an African tribe. You see, in South Africa, you have the Bushmen. They are lighter than the Somalis, and they are African. They are lighter than anyone in Africa, and they live in the South Africa. They call the Bushmen or you know the Kwaizan. Kwaizan. So in Africa, so, we don't have darker or lighter. Rashid, Rashid, was this? So that's, did the that's Somalis what, help the Omanis? Yeah, yeah. I'm coming. I, I'm coming to that. You see, Oman, the the Sultanate of Oman. Uh, there was, uh, you know, they were involved in, uh, you know, where they were part of the colonies. So they colonized in the, in the, on the, uh, what they call it, the coastline of Africa, starting from Zanzibar, Mombasa, and Somalia to Mogadishu. 
So they ruled all those area. They also occupied the land from us. They, 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 were, they were the occupiers. They came there, they occupied, and we were part of, you know, uh, uh, some uh, area. We, uh, you know, because the Somali tribe are Cushitic uh, tribes, they call the Cushitics. Yeah, I think you heard of that. Cushitic, Africa is like Cushitic, Nilotic, and Bantus. And also, so, so, so are, you, are you familiar with uh, John Okello's story before today? No, but I, after I saw that on your title, I did research. So he was motivated by uh, he was anti-colonist. Mm -hmm. So he he was he was doing different kind of jobs and uh, bricklayers and uh, he was hustler. He re I mean he was his mother died. I mean his family. He, he was eleven years old when he started his life like that. And then later on, he moved different area. He was searching, uh, uh, you know, a way out of his uh, hardship of his life. So then he 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 came to Zanzibar and he saw opportunity. A group already established there, which was at the time, it, it was in the early, in the 60s, where the, the multi-party system was starting uh, anti-colonization. Uh, so he joined the, uh, the uh, they called the Shirazi, the bro uh, Shirazi, mm -hmm. is a mixture of, uh, uh, Shiraz, uh, let me go background, Shiraz is a city in Iran. Uh, yeah, so, uh -huh. so they I know were, Shiraz. They were Persian, they were Persian who, who, who were merchants in the in the coastline of Africa? Even they were in you know the, even the the name of Magadisho, if you heard, is is a Persian name. So the name is Magadasa. You know, it's like a permanent uh, something like a, a holy or something like that. So so it is. Uh, so they they were part of the merchants. They were always side by side with the Arabs. So they because they came from the same area. So uh, in so having said in this, saying this. He joined those groups, and then he started uh, anti-colonization. Oh, and yeah, we, I, I, I gave the brief on it. Yes, yes. So the Arabs who were there, who were, you know, the mix, they were not pure Arab. They were actually themselves mixed, uh, kind of mixed, but they're lighter than the, than the others. Yeah, but, but you see, that's, that's what Kidola was saying, because you were saying the color didn't matter, but it did, because even though those, some of those people were mixed, yeah, but they were, they they're not saw, they saw they're the, not they, saw, they were not like African tribes. Yeah, they saw the mm -hmm. Bantus as uh, slaves and treated them as their slaves. Yes, but this, but this, this time was not the slave uh, issue. This time was political issue, because no, but but was, but the, the Africans never had the yes yes, but yes any yes. political power. But I'm coming, I'm coming to that. It, it, so this so, were they were they did they were basically they were slaves. Yeah, I'm coming. I'm coming to that. I'm coming to that. So, so this, uh, the, 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 you know, this, uh, this, this sultan, he was cooperator with the British at the time. He was side by side because he was put there by the British at the time. And then uh, this, the, so the uprise was kind of uh, anti-colonialism in one in one way. And then later on, it turned out. Yeah, that but the, but the this, Arab, but enslaving the Africans on in Zanzibar. Yeah. Right. They, they was not slave, it uh, did not before for that revolution is what broke that chain because remember the slavery is what got disguised mm -hmm. into saying colonization i mean if you they were putting people in chains still yeah, they, but, did, yeah, but that time they had no power true, like the, the right, africans right. the africans had no power yes you see uh, uh, for them was, at that time in the 60s was already in the this was in yeah, the, I'm talking uh, in the '60s, the on the island the, there. Under British colony already, it was not Arab or uh, power at the time. No, the uh, the yes. Sultan. Didn't you see me talk about what John John Okello did? John Okello left the British. Yes. In in Kenya. Yes. The British locked him up in Kenya. Mm -hmm. He left Kenya. Yes. To come to Zanzibar. Zanzibar, yes. In Zanzibar, mm -hmm. the Omanis, the Arabs mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. Yes, they, they they are the ones that control Zanzibar. And they, yeah, they, yeah, they control and it, and right. before 1964, yes, they were there hundreds of years before that. Mm. Yes, they so were, that's they what were. that's that system is mm -hmm. what continued. So yes. the Africans were still considered the slave class until yes, I until John Okello came along. I agree with you. So so that is the part that was the history of of uh, over there. So you. I like the way you make comparison with uh, Nat Turner, Nat who, Turner was also, yes. who was also a slave and he, he turned out uh, 
uh, you know, fighting with the, uh, he said he killed like, uh, they were, he was accused. Are, are you familiar with, with his story? And uh, no, actually, I, I didn't know. I even, although I live in Virginia, <laughs> I didn't know I was in yeah. history. So what happened is that uh, he also was, uh, but he didn't free any, any slaves. No, because, it, for you know, you have to remember in America, you know, even I hear people say the slaves should have gone and freed themselves. It would have been a lot, it's a lot, it was a lot harder because on these plantations, you know, um, it's not like the slaves who can go to places. There were few slaves who can travel with their master from plantation to plantation. So um, Nat Turner was one of those people. So yes, yes, so yes. Maybe that, you know that helped him also. You know, like, you, are you familiar with uh, Frederick Douglass? Yes, I'm familiar with him. Yeah, his story. When you read it, you know, like that's what even made it easier for him to be able to escape because he was able to move around, you know, because of his skills. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So he also, you know, that so this uh, Nat Turner, he was he he turned against the also the uh, the, 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 the the his masters. And he killed uh, also 65 people, including, they say, including even women and children, something like that, they say. Right. Uh, so, so so let me ask you this. Do you think mm -hmm. both Nat Turner and John Okello, mm -hmm. do you think, you know, they were way too brutal and they went too far? Yes. Considering their, uh, do you think, I mean, mind you, these people, like, were, were the oppressed class. Nat Turner was a slave. Do you think he went? They went too far. He was he was in captivity. Yes, they went too far because sometimes if you kill some innocent, that maybe somebody who will have helped you when you know you you, you kill him. You know he killed like women and children, something like that. Even Okello was saying uh, rape women. Don't but no. don't don't rape. He said don't rape. Yeah, he said don't rape. But rape. But he rape, But he said rape everybody. Kill everybody. No, he said don't rape virgins. But he didn't say. Rape or not rape, he just said don't rape. Yeah, don't rape the virgins. He said he 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 categorized. He said don't rape the virgins. Yeah, but he did that not he can he rape did. the other ones. <laughs> well, <laughs> so that means he, he 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 said don't rape virgins. But so so rape but, but, the other but, ones but okay, let me ask you this. So you think that mm -hmm. Nat Turner went too far? Mind yeah, he you, too, he went too far. Mind he you, my, far. Nat Turner was born on those plantations <laughs> as a slave, right? He was from Uganda, actually. He came from different... No, 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 no. I'm talking... No, no, no. I'm talking about Nat oh, Turner mean, now. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, Nat, Nat Turner. Yeah, Nat, Nat, okay, if you think about it, Nat Turner mm -hmm. was born in those plantations. Yes. His whole life, he was a slave. Yes. So this help that you're speaking of, right? Yes. For someone to help him be free. He's never... Mind you, his whole life, nobody stepped up. So, yeah, so, so when it's time, wait, wait when, when it's time for him yeah. to see that, okay, this is how I have to free myself. Mm -hmm. I mean, to think that he should be thinking somebody would help him. Don't you think that's pretty silly? I actually, uh, he, uh, I can say his condition was different than, uh, than Okello. How, how is it different? Okello came to Zanzibar. Let me give you the scenario. The people that look like him, mm -hmm. they have no power. The same situation like Nat Turner, they have zero power. They are based, they are slaves there. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, and it's another group of people that are taking their power, that's taking their power for hundreds of years. That's correct. So, so <laughs> like, I mean, but, but, uh, I, I mean, uh, at, at, uh, where do you, at what point, how do you think someone like that can, you know, somebody can talk reasoning into them? I'm talking this other group had the power for 100 years plus. Yes. They never thought about, you know, any remorse to, to just free these people on their own. Mm -hmm. So now John Okello comes, he's like, okay, these people got to be free because... He saw the same thing in Kenya. Mind you, he was put in prison by the British. Yes, by the British, yes. Because of, you know, they put him there in prison. He met the Mau Maus. 
a group that is fighting for freedom. For freedom in Kenya, yes. Right? The Mamo, in, in, on their own land. So it's kind of hard to to reason with people when yeah. people uh, have, you know, boots on their neck. You see, uh, Nut Turner, he, had, he was in a slave, uh, he was in, a, uh, at the time he was in a slavery situation. And I, we can say that his situation was different than, because of, he was, uh, you know, he could, we can say out of anger, that was, well, that's why he killed the 65 people. But uh, John Ecolo, he came from Uganda. He was not, you know, oppressed by the uh, by the uh, Omanis or any uh, or the Arabs. No, but you yeah. don't know that. He, we don't. We don't know. But uh, but do you say you okay? But he was there, right? Yes. He could see, for instance, because this during those times, East Africa was colonized mm -hmm. by all these different foreign yeah, yeah, powers, Arab, right? Uh, Portuguese. So, uh, yeah, so, so so John Okello, right? Yes. He left Uganda. He went to Kenya. He still was in, he still, you know, could not escape the colonialists. He went to Zanzibar. He saw the same thing. So every region of his, you know, like East Africa, where he's from, mm -hmm. is all controlled but, you know, by is, other what, what, people. So, so like, I mean, he, like, what other choice did he have? Yeah, he had no other choice, but uh, only the only thing I'm not agreeing with him was like kill everybody, like kill uh, kill everybody. That's that's the uh, you he could say kill the uh, you know the, uh, the 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 governors and the people out on the top. Then it's can we can reason for that? But he said uh, kill everybody, like kill most of the eighteen um, plus, kill eighteen and plus. That's what he ordered. So that's the only area I, I, I don't because he with. because his his belief was if he didn't kill them those those young ones would grow up and oppress them. Yeah, but that was uh, you know they they later on those guys he was helping them. They told him you are not part you are not you don't speak the language right you, are, you came from different region and right. they turned him back you know they turned their back on him. Mm -hmm. and oh, he, I know. And he, then he left the 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 the, the, the area. So mm -hmm. he was fighting a cause that he he never been respected. You see, uh, his position was to help the uh, the 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 Bantus who were you know the uh, kind of connection between the Uganda and Ta and Tanzania and Kenya because they are uh, uh, Bantu uh, tribes uh, altogether. So so they are different tribes, but in on the top, uh, you know, they've been uh, 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 categorized Bantus. So he was. So 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 those that. those Bantus, uh -huh. are they, re, you know, like related to the other Bantus in Somalia? Yes, they are related. Yes, yes, because uh, they are related. The Bantus they are related. Yes, to the Somali Bantu too. Yes, they are related. And uh, and so when when I disagree when people say Somalia Somali people they took part of this and that. That's but didn't the Somali did the Somalis okay. collaborate with the Omanis? To, no, they to enslave were them. They were colonizer. How we? How we? Uh, oh, oh, they colonize. They colonize some uh, Somalis too. Yes, they not colonize okay. the whole Somalia, but they colonize uh, uh, some part of Somalia in the southern, the the capital today where we we call Mogadishu, and also uh, some area in the south. But they didn't colonize the whole country because the yeah, well, the, the Oman Somali is... were nomadic. They were nomadic, so no one colonized them. They were, we were like, like free people, like they were nomadic, so they have their own area. And they were fighters, uh, those, those uh, nomads, they have their own, uh, you know, uh, what they call it, their own spurs, and they have those typical African uh, uh, stuff. So they, they were really, uh, they, they, didn't, uh, inter uh, they didn't come to that area. So the Omani, what they did, they built their own sultanate, and they had their own uh, slaves. They brought from, uh, you know, from Mozambique, all the way from Zanzibar, all that. So they created a mix, mix of people from there, the intermarriage. And until today, we have those we call those people Rare Hammer. So they speak in they live in the in the in the, in the side of Mogadishu. See, so that's yeah, the history. They, so they they were the part. Of, are, they are they are they are good slave masters. See, yeah, they were. They, they, they are pretty man. But they the Somali, just... they as a part of the Somali Cushitic, so they never took part of any uh, sort of uh, slave. They don't never slave the slave their own people. You know, so the, the we we, are, we know the Somali were part of African tribe, just like like Soyinke, like Soninke, like uh, you know, like Okuyu, like uh, Luyu, 
like uh, uh, all those like Oromos, they are all African tribes. So everybody lives in their own area. But so, they said the, they said the Somalis colonized and conquered the Oromos. Is that how it no, went? No, the Oromo Somali they were neighbors, and also we are part of but part of us we are Cushitic tribe. We we related to each other. Okay. We related. So we, we you know we related Somalis, the Afar, the Oromos. We are brothers and sisters, but we still we had issues with. The, we sometimes we used to fight between the borders, but the, but the, but the, we don't have any other problems. You know, we don't have any other issues together. We don't have any beef or anything. You know, no problem. We have no issue with uh, with Oromos. So Somali people will not take, uh, like I hearing from uh, uh, what's his name, uh, uh, Kidola, is when he was saying, and also what his name. Uh, uh, Judah, when he was saying Judah, when he was saying talking about Somali did that and Somali, no, that's not those. No, true. Judah said you guys enslaved the Bantus. Yes, it's not true because the Bantus they it's were not, brought, it's brought not by true? the Omani. They brought by the Omanis. Oh, okay. So the the Omanis yes. who colonized Mogadishu area. Yes. Okay, so they brought. Yeah, they brought slaves. Them. They brought their own. They brought those Bantus over there. Yes, they brought them. So they so they live in parts of Somalia. Until today, they live in the southern part of Somalia. They have their own land. They have their own farm. And they, you know, today, they, they, there is some, of course, there are always people who will have discriminations and, and all that. You will hear Jarer and uh, something like that. But that... that so, so in those areas, who is like, who are the people in charge? Is it still the... Is it the descendants of the Omanis or the? No, not the Omanis. They left uh, long after they. The Omanis were gone. They were gone. They were not there anymore. So they're. they're how, how did they leave? How like was there? A, which revolution sent them away? Because the British, when the British came, they left because the British kicked them out. So and the Italians, so they've been kicked out by the, those colonial powers. By the Europeans. Came. Yeah, by the Europeans. So they came and they left. So their uh, their descendants are they are just minority, small group of minority, and they still live uh, section of Mogadishu, and they even suffered them them during the war, and they've been uh, targeted during the during the civil war in Somalia. They've been targeted and looted their stuff, and uh, they, many many of them left the country. Yeah, and some of them are still remaining there, but they you know, but they they don't consider themselves as Omanis. They they you know they mix already with the with the locals and they also uh, speak the language they don't speak any more arabic so they integrated really really great really uh, good you know so it's the same as to the uh, to the uh, to the uh, people who are Afrikaners in south africa see they they are black and they mix with the with the white and they remain there so they, they well, speak the language you mean the, Af the Afrikaners are white no, no, not Africaners. The color, the color. Yeah, yeah. The color, the, uh, those people call color in the living in Cape Town area. Huh. Okay. So that so when you hear that, it's not true. Totally, it's not true. So the Somalis did not enslave Judas people. Okay. No, 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 no. That's totally uh, that that is not true because we how we will enslave another African. You know. Easy. The, I yeah. mean, I mean, I mean, Rashid, you can okay, Rashid, that cannot be the reason. How can we? You know, enslave other African. How other Africans enslaved other Africans? Yes, what, but they, what do you yeah, mean? Of course, it happened. That can be that, that's, that's a bad, bad yes. uh, excuse. Yeah, I, but you see, that you know, this uh, they you know, it happened many times in West Africa, and uh, when another tribe. Not, not only in West Africa. No, when the uh, what Ashanti. Wait, uh, wait. Let me ask you. Ashanti. How come, Rashid? How come? You know, I know this most Somali when we talk about slave. You guys like to point at us, West Africa. Yeah, you see, because Af West Africa, they, they, the tribes, you know, the Ashante uh, of Ghana, they've been enslaved in either tribe, the Fanta and so on. You see, so you they, mean the they, Fantis? Well, this yeah. is, uh, that's a Ghanaian tribe. But, but, but in East Africa, though, mm -hmm. in East Africa, like we're talking about John Okello here, who was supposed to, you know, was a pookie, but he got the job done. He freed the blacks in Zanzibar, and now thanks to John Okello, the 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 Puki who but they didn't who who, who, they didn't who paved who paved the way for the blacks to be able to come to Zanzibar, go to Zanzibar and film YouTube videos there. So shout out to John Okello, Happy Black History Month. Let's bring in Keori on this one here.
Keldick, welcome to the Afridamas Report. What's going on, man? I just got done doing a live stream. Uh, so that so I saw that you yeah, were live. I, I watched I watched some of it. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, what are you guys talking about over here? Oh, we're talking about uh John Okello, you know. Um, so he technically he's a pookie by our standard, right? Mm. But he was able to go to Zanzibar. He's like the leader of the revolution there. He mm -hmm. freed the black people who were enslaved yeah. by the Arabs on that island there. In you know Zanzibar, right? You've heard of I, Zanzibar. I'm with Zanzibar, yeah. Yeah. So so we're talking about how John Akello is similar to Nat Turner, but the only difference is he succeeded, but eventually, you know, he died a pookie still. They all abandoned him and sent him back to his village. Eventually, <laughs> Idi Amin made him disappear. <laughs> so, so I said, you know, just the story of, of a pookie. And also, I sent you an email about, you know, the, the video that Honor shared with you. Which video was that? The one where the, 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 black, the black Indian... The one that said, hey, we're in Africa. <laughs> oh, yeah. What about that? Yeah. Yeah. I said the name. I wanted the name. Oh, yeah. You can yeah. put it in the in the private part. Uh, for me. Yeah, yeah okay. I got to find that real yeah. quick. Yeah. Yeah. She did send me that. Yeah. But yeah, the crazy. um, this Okelo guy, yeah. I said, he inherited Nocturna spirit. Not the Nocturna we had here yesterday, obviously. Because um, uh, he wants ice cream and hamburgers. He wants to know if that, those were in Africa. So, uh, so what do you think about this story? About the story of this man going to Zanzibar and trying to... He's Ugandan. Them. Not tried. He freed he's them. Ugandan. Yeah, he freed them from the Sultan, from the Arabs there. He told the Sultan to kill himself, kill his, you know, kill his family and kill himself, or else he'll do it himself. Well, I mean, you know, like I said, uh, I'm not familiar with this story, but anytime a uh, there is a uprising in Africa to retake or reclaim land, I'm all for it. So I think it's a great story. I never, I never heard of this story before. Oh, oh, oh yeah, they they want they they want this story mm -hmm. to disappear. Like uh, you know, like now there's people that are questioning. They said, did Natona even ever existed? Mm. So. John Okello's story, if it wasn't in the newspapers in 1964, um, right. they would have the people would have said it never it never happened. Yeah, I, I gotta look this story up, but you know, anytime like I see a story of of, of reclamation, I, I I am a fan of that. Um, I gotta I, I gotta study some more on this particular story, but. It's just like even in Zanz not Zanzibar, in Zimbabwe with Mugabe taking yeah. the land back. I think that was a great thing. I think that Africa definitely belongs to the black African. Um, clearly, um, the it, it, everything there from the, the trees to the animals to the water yeah. to the resources itself belongs to the African. And whoever this guy is, if he did that, hey, salute to him. And if they are erasing the story... Salute to you for talking about it and and um and allowing somebody like me who was ignorant of this man now to come into knowledge and uh I'm gonna research it afterwards uh in a minute and uh but I'm I'm glad you're doing the show then man but I, I anything anything that is for Africa I'm, I, I support man oh yeah because you know you know like it says Black History Month right yeah okay. you, you know but Black History Month instead of always showing you know silly stories you yeah, know fables book, yeah. you know like like fables they did not happen right so so now you have many of these blacks traveling to africa to these countries even yesterday you heard one say he didn't even believe colonialism happened yeah because he said the africans love the white man mm. whatever that means but but do you think the somalis did uh enslave the bantus you know the somalis are a because very, that's their region a very reprehensible group of people uh i don't believe that they enslaved anyone um i never have heard about this uh and certainly right now uh they couldn't enslave anything 
Uh, but no, I, I don't believe that they enslaved anybody. No, especially not the Bantus. No, absolutely not. No, is Judah well, uh, of Somali? No, Cameroonian. Oh, he's a Cameroonian. But but Rashid is a is a Somali here. Oh you know no, no 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 no! I don't believe that the Somalis. So so Rashid Rashid chaotic is with you. He said you guys didn't enslave anyone. No. Say say again. I didn't hear it actually. Oh, he said you guys did not enslave anybody. Mm -hmm. So chaotic is with you, huh? here because i'm uh i don't uh i lost the i lost the connection a little bit no chaotic was saying that no he doesn't he didn't believe somalis you know enslaved anyone give me one second give me one second oh, i boy. didn't hear uh, connection okay yeah, go, ahead now. go ahead no i'm saying chaotic is agreeing with you that he didn't believe somalis enslaved anyone I'm really sorry. Uh, let me see. Uh, I don't hear of it. <laughs> what plan are you on, man? Oh, chaotic. Chaotic, look in the chat. Who is there for you? Okay. Judah. Judah, why don't you come up instead of saying chaotic? Why does he, Judah it? ever get on camera, by the way? If he's huh? going to come up, if he's going to come up on the if he's going to come up, t tell him to get on camera, man. Be a man. I think I think Judah is a Fulani. He just don't want people to see. Be a man, Judah. If you're gonna come up on the panel, man, you could hide it behind your avatar. So so okay, chaotic. Someone is writing in the chat. I'll have to ask you this. Yeah. Okay, he said chaotic doesn't believe that Somalis have toilets. Like they want to know where did, like where did you how do you how did you come up with that? Well, I mean, all you have to I mean, let's be honest, bro. Um, all you have to do is look at Somalia, look at the people. You could even ask them. Uh, ask them to cam up and show a toilet. But Rashid just cammed up. Did he cam up and did he show a did, did he did he show himself on the camera? Did he show a toilet? He just did. No, not on the toilet, but well, what I'm saying is if all I'm saying is that the GDP for Somalia is seven billion dollars a year you have american blacks and whites who are billionaires who have the entire gdp of somalia all I, and, and, and i'm not trying to knock somalia but all i'm asking is that afrodamas if any somali calls back in just ask them to come on camera and show well, rashid is here ask him well, he's driving have, though i don't have any smoke for rashid but no rashid is is driving okay but so. how about this if any other somali calls in just ask them come on camera and show their toilet they don't have any toilets no they shit in the hole okay can you uh okay can you hear me off yes we can hear you okay uh this guy is just like uh he has like a 10 years old brain <laughs> 10 years old brain because what he's asking is just like a baby question. Like, so it's nothing, it's not worth it even to answer. So let's go to the next question. You're muted, you're muted, Keori. No, I'm you're sorry. muted. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I said you were muted. Oh yeah, I heard. Oh, okay. So, uh, let, him okay. let him talk real quick, let him talk real quick. I gotta answer this call, let him talk real quick. Okay. Uh, oh, Rashid, Rashid. Sorry, Rashid, are you there? Rashid, are you there? I don't know what happened to Rashid there. Let me see. Rashid? Oh, no. Rashid, call back in. Okay, but guys, okay, forget it. I don't want to, it's not about the toilet today. Hey, uh, give me a but, second. I'll be, I, I'll be right back. Okay, okay. I'll be right back. How long, how, how long are you going to be on? Um, I'll be on in maybe 20 more minutes or so. Give me like five minutes. Okay. Yep. All right, guys, that was chaotic. So, so guys, those of you that, that came in late, you know, you missed out on part of the story. We were talking about, because I've heard people argue. Some of them even tried to say the Arabs never enslaved the Africans. So call in. If you are one of those people. And you know what? Judah, you are the perfect guy to call in because John Okello is a Bantu like you. 
I mean, you claim to be a Bantu, but he went and freed your Bantu people on the island. So call in and tell us how that slavery happened. You know, how those people found themselves, you know, on the Arab rule. Did the tectonic plate took the Arabs to them? Actually, they made it easy. They traveled and went to the source of the people they want to enslave. So making it easier for them to do it. They don't have to transport them back and forth. It's pretty wild. Rashid, are you are you good now? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah I'm then. good now. Because, uh, you know, when you move around, uh, I was driving, so uh, that's why I, could, I lost connection. You yeah, see, this Judah, guy, wait, uh, wait, Judah said, said wait, wait. Like? Judah said, are you going to let me talk? Of course, Judah, call him. Uh, I will let you talk. Go ahead, Rashid. So, you know, what his name, this guy? Uh, uh, Who? Uh, chaotic yeah he claimed to be nigerian right he said you know, he's, he's american nigerian uh, okay yes of okay, nigerian let's, let's descent talk, okay in nigeria in a place called in the lagos there is a place called uh, uh Kimo, kimoko or something like that what? you see it's the it's a whole community of four what is it called people. Uh, kimoko, uh, what do you call it uh, uh Moko, mokomo or something like that Mok makoko makoko it's Makoko. almost 400,000 people live there and they shit inside their, uh, you know, they, they, uh, they, they live in under the water, on the top of the water. And they, they, they toilet is just where they drink the water from there. And they, 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 their toilet is over there. They don't have even toilet. They drink the water from there and their children are swimming over there. They was done by a documentary by a YouTuber, uh, a New Zealander. I was shocked when I saw that. <laughs> I was really shocked. So when he talked about toilet, go. Let's just see his ancestors or he his fathers if he born in America, but his parents are from there. So he has to know that his parents lived over there. You know, maybe lived over there, and he came to America. That's why he. Wait, wait, Rashid, something you said they're drinking the something water. New to him, something new to him because he was he was living in those areas. You said they would. They drink the the poopy water. Yes, go and check. Uh, go and check that oh, video. Wait, I mean, America said no. They don't drink the water. But they, sw yeah, they drink. They swim. If you swim, it's like drinking because the body, <laughs> the water goes to your to your body. <laughs> it's like drinking it. You know that the body, Aphrodamus, the body drinks a lot of water when you take shower. You know. Wait, that. wait. Judah said. Judah said they drink. Judah, Judah, call in. Yeah, they, they drink Call also. In. See, see, okay, fine. You know, that's that's and fine. He but... called, uh, you know, okay, was, well, well, he called people, uh -huh. uh, he called West Africans eating uh, monkeys. His ancestors eat that. And he, you know, maybe uh, uh, he was raised by eating monkeys himself. So if okay, he, why he, he can but, tell but, him to. Uh, tell wait, him wait to, till it comes come by. Back. Let's, let's. No, let's, tell Kiori, let's... Kiori to come back and talk to me. Talk to, call him back. Because I lost connection oh, okay. uh, that time. Okay. No, because he was saying that you guys have never enslaved any group, and you it's because he said you are not capable of doing it. No, we don't. We don't have to because why we slave in our own African brothers? Why? If there's no war between us. Well, because because you know I know no, but if, other Africans if, have if done it. War, even yes, even in West even in West Africa. Yeah, after, after that, it ha this happens is when the war happens between the two tribes, right? If there's well, no war between the two tribes, well, not really, no not really. Well, some yeah. places they just the chiefs, the chiefs needed some alcohol and umbrella or mirrors, you know. But why he has the slaves then? Well, because to sell they, them. He already. He captured no, already. No, because this, some the, of slaves, the, other the slaves, the slaves, you know, maybe like, do you you want to tell me some Somalis did not need, let's say to to buy more camels, for example, they didn't... No, 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 no. Back in those we days? Have, we had Somalis, they have a lot of camels by themselves. Yeah, but, so but you'll have it. to buy it. You'll have to buy no, it. No, you don't have to buy it. No, this is like people, you know, lived in uh, the, the, the nomads. They have their own livestock. They have their own camels. Everybody has like thousands of camels. And the, the camel are the most precious thing until even today. One camel costs $1,000. Yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. The, like the camel, 
because back in those days you gotta to buy the camel horns. No, they didn't buy. They used to uh, used to uh, they used to just uh, loot it from other tribe. <laughs> oh, they they, they you, just yeah, go and steal it. it. <laughs> yeah, steal it. Yes, you go and steal it. Yes, and you take it by force. You know, but those no, that, that's yeah, you're right. right. That's tribe. that's that's better than enslaving. But they, you see, that's not another tribe. It's, I'm talking about Somali between the Somalis, not uh, not other people. They, you know, they in, from another clan because we have a tribe. Somali is one tribe, of, uh, one African tribe, and we have also kind of uh, family lineage uh, uh, kind of things. And that's really a minor thing. But that thing, so the pe people living in the other area, and then this guy will live maybe in another area. They were nomads. So when they see camels, uh, uh, you know, no one, no one uh, on it. They used to just grab it and then uh, and then uh, and then take it. So that's the so, only... so. it was a lot of it was a lot of camel thieves running around. No, there was no love, but it it can have been cases. Well, like, well they're they still they were stealing it. Yeah, of course. You know, if you have, you know, they people will will will, will do whatever you know to uh, to to live. This is a uh, it, it used to happen. Uh, uh, Things wow, happened. Yes, it happened. But we never had. That's it. pretty never, interesting. But we never had any kind of uh, slavery or anything like that. No, huh. we never enslaved any other African tribe or or anything like that. And so what Judah is saying is not true. I told him yesterday, bring any proof, and he still he doesn't have so, any. Proof. So what if Judah calls in and say, no, in fact, you guys Somalis were do you know had slaves just like the Omanis. You guys collaborated. Because you know, you know, you will, you would, you wouldn't put it, you know, would you put it past him? He could say something like that. You see, after that, everybody can say whatever they want, right? Right. But you know, you have to bring proof. If you have anything, you gotta bring a proof. So you show. You say this is what I have in the history. Like you show, you know, John Okello, or you know, yeah. you have to bring some some stories like that. Then mm -hmm. I will say, yeah, you're right. I I am someone who who never deny things. If I see it's you know you bring in front of me, so Judah is just lying, you know. He was just lying, and uh, he claimed to be a Bantu, and uh, he claimed to be an, uh, from Egypt, and he doesn't have any any proof for that even, because Bantu never even went to e Egypt. It was uh, wait, the wait, uh, no, but he said they came uh, from Egypt. So he the, said the Nubians and all that. Wait, wait, wait. Are you saying he's not Egyptian? No, because there's no proof of history. There's no Bantus in uh, in uh, in Egypt. The Bantus are more predominantly in the Kenya, Tanzania, and Mozambique. So where he where he got this kind of uh, history, that he is a uh, <laughs> <laughs> hold on, I, I saw, a, hold on. Let me read a, a Facebook he, comment. A Facebook Israel, Israel or something. Let me read a Facebook comment from uh, a Gambian brother here. Dude, 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 He said. Somalis were were a stateless people, which often implies a more egalitarian society. They were less likely to have had slaves. Well, okay. So uh, somebody tell him to come up. Okay, tell no, him he said he said no. He's saying you guys did not have slaves, so he's supporting you. Oh, he's, he's sorry, I'll take, take, okay, He's take agreeing me. with you. Yeah, like meaning it's like like you. He but said, you know you guys, what? What I heard before that, what the statement? He so wait, before. wait, wait, wait. So Rashid. You you're touching something interesting here. Mm. Are you saying that uh, Judah mm. claiming that? Well, he okay. He didn't only say they are bound to Israel. He said they came from Egypt, and he's claiming that Chad, all those places were Egypt. So that's why he said they, they he's Egyptian. You see, the 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 Chad where the Chadian people are not Bantus. So he, what he's claiming, is baseless because the Bantu that he's claiming, they never, they can't, they never, they don't stretch all the way to Egypt, because Africa is a tribe. So in Egypt, you have the Southern Egyptians, which they are the Nubian tribe, and the Kermet, and those the people. Kermet. Yeah. The, yes, the Kermet. Yes. So they are, they are different so, tribes. So, 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 do they have Bantu tribes in each part of the Egyptian? No, they don't. Have, they don't have it. They don't have it. Huh. So I don't know where the, he got this history, this fan, this fan, this kind of, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> dream of history, maybe. I don't know where he got it. Hold on, let me read this. Amilka said, Afridamas, they tried to shame us for slavery. 
but they've been murdering each other for over 30 years. How is that better? Okay, uh, I think. And okay, Mimi said, did you the, see the about, Somali what guy what that responded? Hold, hold on. Hold on. One second. He said, did you see the Somali guy that was responding to Trump? I sent it to you. No, I haven't seen it yet, Mimi. I'll look it up. Sorry, go ahead, um, Rashid. Yes, you see a war. You said, you war. said, you said, what about where? There's okay, no war in Liberia. 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 You know, Liberia had a you see, Africa, Yeah, they had a war. Right. Okay, war happens. War happens. Mm -hmm. And That's you know, true. this is politics. Yeah. This is yeah, right. we, we, there, what we know we have war, we have situation. America mm -hmm. had uh, wars also north and south in America. So yeah. wars always happens. And that was really a political wars we had. And it happens in in all Africa. It's not new to Africa. War we have that, and that's nothing, nothing only to for Somali people. So we had that, and now we just we we overcoming uh, out of the war. And okay. We, wait, 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 wait. That's, wait, that's uh, something Rashid. that you know that every many African countries have went through. Yeah, Rashid, that's we have like, Judah. We have Judah here. Yes, bring Judah in. He's here, Judah. Can you hear us, Judah? Yes, Afidemus, can you hear me? Hey, Judah, welcome to the show. Judah, um, how do you feel about your, you know, I mean, because you said you're Bantu, so we'll just address you as a Bantu. How do you feel about your fellow Bantu brother, uh, John Okello, going to the island of Zanzibar and freeing his fellow Bantus from Arab slavery? Um, like I said, like... Um, you have a, a guy on the panel who doesn't know who the Bantu was. So uh, when I came last time, I said the Bantus were inhabited Egypt. And Egypt that you see today wasn't the Egypt that was yesterday. The Egypt was, uh, Egypt expanded to Ethiopia, um, Sudan, and all these places. So what happened, why the Bantu fled Egypt was that they got chased out by the Arabs that came from Saudi Arabia and Yemen and all these people, even the Somalis no, no, that you find wait, today. Let me Saudi, finish. Let me finish. Saudi Arabia? You gonna let me? You gonna let me talk? No, even no. The I didn't. Like no, you. I didn't hear you. I didn't hear you. Said did you say Saudi Arabia? Yep. The, the, okay. The I wanted to. You have to remember, I'm the host. I want to make sure I hear you clearly. Right. 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 Please, so the Arabs, the Arabs, no, when they came, invaded no, Egypt. They chase out the, the Bantus and the ones that were able to fight, they became no, the Nubians and the Nubians now have admixtures in them. Those were the ones that stayed, the ones so, that so fled. Judah, Judah, so are the Bantus, since you say you guys are like superior, like sup Bantu supremacy. Exactly. How, okay, how did the Arabs like were able to enslave you on your own land for such a long time? Okay, okay, okay. This is this is the thing, right? Um, the Bantu Bible says that uh, the, the, the Bantu, Bantu Bible. The, did you right. say the Bantu it, Bible? Exactly. Exactly. Wait, it what, says is, the what, Bantu, is the, what is the name? What is the name of it? It's called the Bantu Bible. It's, it's called the Bantu Israelite Bible. If you want oh, it, it's who, all written. It's all written in Bantu language. So who wrote it? <laughs> See, you have to laugh. <laughs> You're not serious, my guy. Wait, wait, Alfredemos. You keep asking who wrote the Bible. Yeah, who wrote the, the Bantu Bible? That's what I'm telling you. It, 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 the people, the Bible was with, sent to the Bantu people. Are you? Are you? Are you? Are you? Are you trolling? I'm not trolling. The Bible. Because was you know, you know, you know, John Okello was a Christian. But the this is the thing, right? This is the thing. Let me finish. The okay, go ahead. John Okello. This is the thing. The Bantus that came from Central Africa, there was what was called a Bantu expansion. The ones that went to East became, had admixture in them. So you cannot compare a Bantu in East Africa or Kenya or Tanzania with the ones that you find in Central Africa because they have mixed with other tribes. Now what John Okello did, to help, you know, you know, to help the Bantus from Zanzibar because Zanzibar was overtaken by Arabs and they were oppressing the Bantus, using them as slaves, like I told you. Wait, and, wait, um, you say what? 
the Arabs in Zanzibar were using yeah. the Bantus as slaves because Tanzania and Zanzibar is a Bantu territory. They invaded Zanzibar, even they, they invaded Zanzibar and, you know, took out the Bantus so, and used so them wait, as slaves. Wait, 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 in the chat, you, was, you were agreeing with uh, Rashid that in Makoko, in Nigeria, those people, they drink the water too. Right. I mean, I've, I've seen, I've seen, look, this is the thing, right? I've agreed that you cannot have a guy like Chaotic Truth who comes here and believe that um his own people eat monkey meat and eat dog meat and eat cat meat. And I've seen videos like that of what is happening in Makoko, but these places are not new to any other African countries because you travel across the continent, you might find similar things like this, right? So I don't want to come here and disrespect people countries. You know, I don't want to come here and disrespect people for eating what kind of meat they eat because um, that's what makes them healthy. Now, my own problem, I get upset is when people want to disrespect me or disrespect my culture or disrespect my religion. And then what I come is your, out to what is, your, what, is your, what is your religion? I just told you we are a Bantu Israelite. Um, and we know and we don't follow colonization. We believe that our territory expanded from where it is Cameroon all the way down to Congo and so, all these other so, places. Wait, how did the Bantus, your fellow Bantu brothers, ended up in uh, Somalia? Right, that's what I'm telling you. Doing the doing in it okay, when the, the, the original land of the Bantu was Egypt. But they got chased out by the invaders, even part of Somalia and all these places. The Somalians that you see today, most of them were Yemenis. Most so of the them. Soma wait, wait. The, so the Somal you're saying the Somalis are Yemenis? They, they so are they Yemenis. Are, like, are you calling exactly. them Arabs? Yeah, they are not Arabs, wait. but they are Yemenis. If you well, Yemenis, most of are, them, Yemenis are Arabs. Oh, if they, you say they so. They have Arab tribes, yeah. Okay. Rashid, Rashid so. is he telling the truth? No, this guy he doesn't. Uh, he I don't know what books he reads. And I don't I'm know which. I'm telling you, the, the Bible. Uh, hold on, hold on. Let me let me read this. If he's uh, if he's on drugs or if he's <laughs> hold on, on. Let me read this. Let me read this. Wait. Shout out to my favorite cousin, Bantu Israelite Judah Empire. Please say Ning come poop. Oh my God. Okay. Thank you, Supergirl. Supergirl yeah. wants. Yes. Uh, uh, so hold on, let, hold on, hold on, Rashid. Let me thank Supergirl here, okay. real mm -hmm. quick. One second, one second. Where did it go? Where did it go? Here. All right, go ahead. So, uh, what I was trying to say is that Somalis are not Arab. But we are broad Muslim people. We are uh, we have our own faith, so that's why we related to the Arabs. I didn't say we, you guys are Arab. I say your DNA no, no, shows that most of you guys you. came from Yemen. I didn't interrupt you, right? I didn't interrupt you, so don't interrupt me. So the the Somalis are not Arab, but Somalis are Muslim. Somalis are African tribe. Somalis are also color wise, we are black, just like any you know any other Africans. So. But we are Muslim. We we so we related to the Arabs in that matter. The Arab Muslims. They are also they have Arab Christians. They have Arab Jewish who live in Yemen, and they have Arab Jewish who are living also in Morocco and so on. So they so then uh, so but we are not uh, like he claiming this guy claiming he's from Egypt and he doesn't. Yeah. Have so so group. so Judah Judah is Judah is not a Central African or West African. He's Egyptian. Yeah, that he is no, that he's I didn't say, I didn't say I'm Egyptian. I didn't say I'm Egyptian. I said I'm Bantu Israelite. Look, he's claiming that he was kicked out. How you can be kicked out if you belong there? How you be easily kicked out? That's see, you know, see, to, see. You are, you are, you are bring, you are getting yourself into a trouble. How you see this guy? This guy. How can land. you say how you? Wait, 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 wait. How do you say we get kicked out and we belong there, people? In, in, we you know said, what happened you, say, in you said that you said that you've been exactly kicked. we know so what how, happened how, in Africa. if you belong there how you get how you how you are easily kicked out by the arabs exactly we know what happened when the invaders came right even your country got invaded by the europeans that came over most african countries got invaded 
you but know, the, Wendy, uh, when, f- Wendy. First, no, first Wendy. Talk, let's talk about your people. You say you've been kicked out as a Bantu. That's what I'm saying. We got, and we got have, invaded. Okay. Okay, we I want to I mean, read interesting. I want to read those books. Where is written? Can you, you haven't read no it? books yet, so you just want to keep arguing. So we but can't you keep arguing. But, but Judah, 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 you see like John Okello is a Ugandan, right? Are Ugandans Bantus? Yeah, yeah Uganda are Bantus. That's why I want to say but, the but Bantu the Ugandans, But they don't claim, you know, Egyptian why, why, DNA. Why, 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 and they, why, and why, their, country, their country is closer to Egypt than, than Cameroon. No, no, no. This is the thing. You, you have to go and read the Bantu expansion. What happened during the Bantu expansion? The Bantu expansion was a period of time where the Bantus were having, they were multiplying. Their population was increasing in Central Africa. And they decided to expand to the east, uh, south, and, and, and I'll be, southeast. I'll be, I'll be back, okay? I'll be okay, back. Okay, okay. Go ahead, Judah. So yeah, so so you read about the Bantu expansion, you will have a clue about so, so, what, so, who the Bantu but Judah, are. Judah, you know, someone said Okello it was a nilot. He's a nilotic. That's the, he's a most nilotics claim Bantu, but they are not. So I don't even. That's why I was I wasn't even talking about. He's a nilot. Nilotics are Sudanese, South Sudanese, and part of Ugandans. But you also have Ugandans that are also Bantu in the south. Yeah, Okello. Okay, let's, okay, let's bring in. Uh, oh, there's uh, Kaizo. Welcome, Kaizo. What do you know about John Okello? Ah, uh, John Okello, perfect guy. So John Okello was actually a Ugandan, and he was actually one of those uh, mixed tribes between Bantu and Nilot. But from his father's side, uh, he is actually a Nilot. So what happens if you notice the East African history, Akudamas? You gotta know this. Specific tribes have been ruling over the other tribes. Right. So, Why example, is that? Okay, so it's to do with docility a little bit. Unfortunately, some tribes don't have that. Uh, you see, it took a Ugandan Nilot to go and fight for these uh, Zanj people in Tanzania. Because mm-hmm. even the Arab, when he wrote about the Zanj, he said, the Zanj is extremely docile. The right. Zanj will dance at the, uh, at the rhythm of a beat. If you type in Somali Bantu right now, you'll see how they shake their ass. These are the, the descendants of the Zanj. The, the, mm, the same the culture Somali band that's how they were by the Somalis, right? They don't have that fighter spirit. So it took a Ugandan half Bantu Nilot to go and save them. So this history has been the same. This is why the Bantus, unfortunately, were enslaved by the Tutsis. The same Tutsis, even guess what in Ugandan history? Exactly. You know they have been, power? They've been Idi Amin was actually a Tutsi also. He was half Hima. Hima, I have Bantu, right? You know, I saw then, that Idi Amin, no, Idi Amin was, uh, was a Nilot, bro. Yeah, was yeah, 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 originally yeah, from uh, uh, right. Sudan. part of South Sudan. Right, yes. he's a Nilot. It is half, half, half Nilot and half Hima, right? And the right. Hima is a ruling right. class again right now with uh, the current president Museveni. So these people go around, same in Rwanda, same in Burundi. It, it, they always have this uh, warrior class to go and colonize everybody else. So Kelo, although he's uh, half Bantu, he had that spirit of the Nilot to go and uh, fight. But then he started becoming dusty, uh, putting on, um, harming his people. So, I mean, the, the, the Tanzanians. So they got rid of him. They deported him to Kenya. And, uh, God and knows Kenya deported him. Exactly. Kenya deported yeah. him back to Uganda. And Uganda... Kaizo, didn't, didn't the Somalia uh, in, uh, enslave the Bantus? Yes, yes. The Somali Bantus. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on, Kaizo. Kaizo, Rashid came... Rashid said, no, they never enslaved no Bantus. Oh, he said no, it was no, the Arabs. Uh, it was the Arabs that <laughs> brought them there. Okay, uh, I can send you a link right now. You can share it. They actually saved the Oromos and the Bantus in their own country. And you know what? They used to love the young Oromo girls because of good concubines, young girls of twelve years old. And then the Bantu there you girls go. they used them for work. I, I can show you the, the link right now. Uh, huh. But it actually happened. It, it's just a Somali babble um, that they they lie. You know, it's part of their culture to not seem like they're bad people. But trust me. They enslaved them. Let me show you. Well, I mean, well, maybe they were paying them, were they? No, of course not. They were buying them. Not <laughs> there you go. Why would they be paying them? Come on, man. I mean, I just got to ask questions like... Look, you can read oh, it now. I want to make sure we are on... Okay, let me see. See, when I came here and told you guys they were being... Uh, uh, well, 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 I'm not going to take... No, I'm still going to wait for Rashid because 
I mean, Rashid got to, you know, defend his people. He says, slavery nah, in Somalia. Hold on, hold on. Wikipedia. Yeah, let me, let me pull it up. Hold on. Let me, let me pull it up here. So people don't think I'm... Um, but, okay, Kaiser, let's say the, the slavery happened there, right? But was it the Arabs who did it? No, it was ethnic Somalis who enslaved them. Uh, it was the Somali as well. Okay, hold on. Let me read that. It says, slavery in Somalia existed as part of the East African slave trade. Okay. Just like the one in Zanzibar, right? Um, exactly. To meet, the, Zanzibar. To meet the, demand, the demand for menial labor, Bantus from Southeastern Africa, slaves were exported from the Zanzibar and were sold in cumulatively large numbers over the centuries to customers in East Africa and other areas in Northeast Africa and Asia. People captured locally during wars and raids were also sometimes captured by Somalis and Ethiopians, mostly of Shanquila, Oromo, Amhara, and Nilotic origin. However, the perception, capture, treatment and duties of both groups of slaves differed markedly with Oromo favored, favored over Oromo subjects were not viewed as linguistically and culturally different by their Somali owners. Between 2,500 to 3,000 years ago, speakers of the original Proto-Bantu language group began a millennia long series of migrations eastward from their original homeland in the general Cameroon area of Central Africa. Oh, that's Judah's people. Okay. Let me bring exactly. in. Exactly. There me, you go. Let me bring in Rashid because, you know, it's only fair for Rashid to come and, you know, defend his history. Rashid. Rashid, yeah, are you there? Yeah, Rashid, yeah, did, you, you. did you hear what Kaizo said? No, I just, I told you I was, you know, I was. Okay, so I'll we have, that. so he brought the proof here. It did say, yes, the Somalis did. Somalis and Ethiopians did, in fact, enslave Bantus. Um, yeah, and he said, yeah, he said these Bantus came from general, generally Cameroon area of Central Africa. The it's Bantu, not true. Totally is not true. Okay, so it says the Bantu expansion first introduced Bantu peoples to Southern and Southeast Africa. The Bantus inhibiting Somalia are descended from Bantu groups that had settled in Southeast Africa after the initial expansion from Cameroon and whose members were later captured and sold into East African slave trade. Bantus are ethnically, physically, and culturally distinct from Somalians, Somalis and Ethiopians. They have remained marginalized ever since their arrival in the Horn of Africa. Okay. Okay, yeah, Fred Damas, uh, there is, you know, as I told you earlier, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Africa is a tribe. We have many tribes, right? Uh, right. Ethiopia has almost 40, uh, 70, 70 uh, tribes in, in Ethiopia itself. Kenya has 41, uh, including the Indians. They added Indians as the f f 40 40, 41st. Oh, oh, yeah, the Indians are the new tribe of Kenya. Kenya, Ken Kenyans, yeah. Kenya they are wild, though. Kenya, yeah. they will register you. Okay, that's yeah, cool. they will register you. If you, you know, okay. they have some. They have many tribes. Yeah. So that's, uh, so that's nice is, uh, of them. So so then uh, so Ethiopians, there's nothing like call something Ethiopia. Uh, they have tribes like Oromo tribe. Wait, wait, Rashid, let me ask uh, Kaizo Mara something tribe. real quick. Kaizo, so Kaizo, if I want to register the Soninke tribe there, you know. How would I go about doing mm -hmm. that? You have to pay some. You have to live here for at least a hundred years, and then pay the government uh, some money to become a, a tribe. Oh, okay. I, I'll, so just Keza, what, I'll, what, I'll just stay. Where, I'll, I'll just stay where. I'll just stay where. I will uh, stick with. Uh, uh, I want to ask a Kaza, right? What tribe are you, Kaza? I don't have tribe, man. I'm just. I'm just. So you. So you are a bastard. So you are a bastard. 
Fair enough. I'm the first of my line of the Kaiser. So, so you don't have a dad, right? You don't have a dad. You don't have. You don't have a dad. Uh, I am the father of the line of the Kaiser Empire. No, but if you don't have, you don't have. If you don't have, if you don't have any uh, tribe, that means you don't have it. Because in Africa, we go. What by is the that father. beep? Who's who's yeah, you have the beep? We go by the father. You know, we go by the father. Yeah, Rashid. Listen, Rashid. I am a Kaiserian. That's my tribe. I don't prescribe to these other dusty tribes. But then, then I'm you don't, don't talk tribe. about Africa then, if you don't, because you don't belong. Hold to on, Africa. hold on. But, but Kaizo, Kaizo, aren't you like a Wanga? Weren't you guys slave traders? Me? No, 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 no. I'm not. I'm not. Your tribe. Uh, my, okay, my African tribes, obviously, are three of them, right? Wanga, I'm 50%. No, Wanga, you cannot have three mother. of them. You can have one. Bro, bro, listen, listen. I'm, I, I'm a high IQ. You're a dusty 68 IQ Somali. You have to listen to me. Listen. No, brother. tell me who, what have, tribe are you bro, first? listen. You have 68 IQ. Listen, brother. I have three tribes. 50% Wanga for my father, uh, my mother's No, that line. doesn't go with us. It's not DNA thing. It's not like uh, Ancestor.com. Bro, I'm a I'm white man. I'm out Ancestor.com here. You have to you say that, that we belong that tribe. Brother, let me finish my point, then you can speak. You are talking to us. We are African. If Afrodamas is not a European. Bro, you we are 68 IQ. We go by the father. Okay. You have Mine to say your father's tribe. Simple. But wait, Kaizo, 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 you took a DNA test? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've, I've okay, because you know, you know, Nat Turner yesterday said he was afraid to take the DNA. So what if it comes up, he's a giraffe or something? <laughs> but but continue. Okay, uh, tell us your composition. My, yeah, yeah okay. let me give my percentages, guys. Listen, I'm 50% okay. Wanga from my mother's side. I'm 25% Kisi. Wait, so 50% of you, those are the slave traders, right? Right, then 25% Kisi and then 25% Gabra. Those are my genes. I know, these are like minority tribes. They live among the people. The, who are these people, this tribe you, you say? What, can you say it again? No, these dusty Somalis enslave my people, the no, Oromos, no, right? 25% of me is these Oromos. Are, these, are, these are really uh, not even a drop of tribes. You don't have, you're not the major tribes. No, you are really why would I want minority to be a tribes. Why would I want to be major? Because you are nothing then, because you don't have a position to say to, to have a slave. You know who Bro, do you know who, who the Wanga is? Listen, who is you slave? Who you do you slave? know who the Wanga is, brother? Well, I never heard of any of you. Exactly. The Wanga was, they don't, they was don't. highly organized, high IQ tribe when the white man came. And we worked with them to enslave these other Africans. Uh, you can no, I, about no I like to learn. I like to learn, you know. You know I, yes, I, we I, Wangas, I, right? We were okay, the highest IQ people. No, approved by the white man. Wait, the white man decided that? Yeah, type in Wanga. Who, who's who's like, beeping? Uh, I think it must be, uh, Jude, uh, maybe it's Jude or Rashid driving. Yeah, it's me. Yeah. Rashid, listen, Rashid, you put, must put your seatbelt on, Rashid. Okay, you say that the British say you have a uh, good IQ, right? The, no, listen, let me explain the Kenyan history, right? Before the Wanga's kingdom, Kenya was a dust. It was filled with dusty tribes. Like the Kisis, or the Gabras, the Kikuyus, these were dusty people living and chasing uh, gazelles and hyenas. As uh -huh. Wangas, we are the only Wait. kingdom in Kenya history. You can read about us. The only oh, kingdom. I want to know why. Hold on, I'm reading. I'm reading. I'm reading. Country. Hold on, I'm reading the Wangas here. He said, The Wanga kingdom is a Bantu kingdom within Kenya consisting of the Wanga, Abawanga tribe of the Luha people, Abal Abaluya. Well, Luya, Luya, yeah, Luya is the yeah. major one. One of the major. No, not Luya. Abal, Ab, it says Abaluya. Okay. I did speak. The the kingdom covered an an expansive area from from Jinja in West Nevasha to in the East African Rift. The Wanga Kingdom was a significant African empire and the most organized structure of government in pre-colonial Kenya politically, economically, and militarily. Okay. So, so Kaizo is yeah. not making it up. He's Wanga, let's see, the Wangas here, the Wangas and slavery. Yes, the Wangas were major slave traders too. <laughs> okay. So, so he's proud. So Kaizo, so 50% of you is a slave trader. Yes. But you see, I'm, I'm proud of it because, right, these people were weaker than us. We had to enslave them. Without us, Kenya would be dusty yeah. like the other countries like it was. We helped civilize the Kenyans. The Kenyans didn't have clothes before us. They were running around, the Kikuyus running wait, around wait, with no clothes. Wait, the Kiku, they didn't. So, you, and then the, so how, how, did the, how, how did the Kikuyus how become the, the best dressed Kenyans now then? 
No, listen, even the Somalis were drinking camel piss before we, we, we taught them to be civilized. That's what Kenyans were dusty. They Wait, the Ke you, you said you guys civilized the Somalis too? <laughs> we civilized all of them because before that they used to drink camel piss. They had the Kenyans didn't have clothes. They run around like read about Kikuyu. They didn't have an empire, not even kingdom. You they, see, I, I hate to talk about I I hate to talk about other uh, Africans. Like I don't I, I don't like to. No, I mean it's it's history. It's it's history. But, uh, but this guy, no, no, he's talking about something that uh, something like. Did you hear that? Because, Rashid, uh, the most organized high IQ tribe and a kingdom in uh, in Kenyan pre-colonial history. That's who we are. Kikuyu. You guys, it's Kikuyu. It's Kikuyu. No, Kikuyu didn't even have a kingdom. Kikuyu. You can do research. No, Kikuyu. Okay, bro, why listen. don't you rule? No, okay, bro, bro, no, hang on. no, no, bro, listen one second. You. Why don't you Go rule ahead. the country? Why don't you rule the country? You know who's why don't we the rule the country? It's Kikuyu. Kikuyu rule Kikuyu. the country, right? Because yes, there's more Kikuyu of them. Kikuyu is ruling the country. percent. Why don't you rule? If you why don't you rule? You are a barefooted person. How do how do what 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 do you rule? Okay, you are Rashid, food in, uh, eating Rashid, uh, Rashid, you're eating Rashid, lions. Let me explain. You, you eat okay, lions. fine, Rashid. What do you, what do you, you ask a what question. You, let me answer your question, brother. brother. <laughs> you eat tigers brother, and lions in, in, uh, over okay, there. Okay, let me answer your question, That's your Rashid. food. That's your food. Let me answer your question, brother. Brother, please. Us Wangas, we did not have our land stolen. Okay, Wanga, Wanga eat lions Kingdom. and crocodiles. Hang on. That's what you... Brother, that's what brother, uh, there's no lions in Wanga land. We live no, no, <laughs> actually you, you very eat, you, eat eat those, uh, you eat those uh, wild animals. That's what you eat. Brother, we don't have wild animals you, in our your area. Your mind is you're like, not, like, you know, I want to talk to your Rashid, level. I want to talk to your level. We do not have wild animals where we, where we are from, Rashid. You know, brother, you know, listen. You see me, I talk with people with respect. If somebody has no respect, I talk to their level. Finish, brother. Finish. Okay. Finish. You have 68 IQ. Okay. Your people okay. Eat, let me uh, let me United say. States. Let me speak. Okay, let me speak. You don't have let food in your country, okay. Rashid. There's okay, no food in your country, Rashid. You ran away. Oh, I'm in Kenya speak. right now. Look, you because can't your country compare. has no food. Okay. Brother. Okay. Let, okay. Go ahead. Let me talk. Let me talk. Let me. Talk. Well, uh, guys, guys, talk. one mic. One mic. Okay. Mic. You see, we ca you cannot compare to us. We are one tribe who own whole country. We are sitting in the United Nations. One tribe, and also and also we own Djibouti. And we have two united in the United Nations, two Somali tribes. Do you have that? No, bro. We're the, only the, the African of, uh, of America see, is we Kenyan. Are the only, that, that, and uh, let me bro. finish. Let me finish. And you see, in Kenya, in Kenya, we we are the we are the major business people in Kenya. Two billion dollar business in Kenya, in in Isli. And you, and you live in you so you say you live in uh, the slums of Kenya. So you are talking slums, about yeah. someone who owned Kenya as a business people. And you are like you live in the shit of of Nairobi, you live in the slums. You said yourself. Yes, I live. So in you slums. are talking. You are talking to uh, you know as a Somali. We own even Kenya. You know who's the former pre who was the the the, the, the deputy of the, uh, the speaker of the parliament in Kenya? It's a Somali. Who uh, you wait, know, we wait, own whole region. Wait, wait, hold on. I just have a quick question. Uh, of, 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 Kajo, of, people are asking. They want to know. They want the list of the hotels of wangaland because they are feeling it they really Wanga they, is not even they want around. they want to visit wangaland <laughs> okay they don't even no, exist. okay so as you said right our kingdom went all the way up to naivasha okay what we don't you rule over... today what don't you rule today okay don't talk do about don't today? talk about history talk today today okay today obviously our ex uh running you know Raila Odinga, the guy running for president unfortunately he was cheated he's wanga um so and it's, it's sad but we, he didn't he didn't win uh the fake way he was he's, too he's good. a luyu tribe he's not wanga no he's, he's not he's not luo he's wanga brother no he's not he's, not luo. he's a luyu he's wanga he's one of our royalty yeah. actually hold on hold on let's let's him. allow we have two speakers also um we we have catch al and east african catch al welcome to the show how you doing brothers glad to, uh, hear, uh, glad to be here uh, thank you for being here. Hey, catch Al. Did you catch um, me, uh, the beginning where I was talking about John Okello, um, the Ugandan that went to Zanzibar and freed the Africans who were in bondage? You know, uh, the Arabs had them as slaves, pretty much. They said third class citizen, but that's slave, right? right? So he freed them, even though people in today's term, you might say he's a pookie, but he went and freed them. So he had the spirit of Nat Turner. What do you think about his story? Well, you know, I um, I just came, it's funny. I just came across this guy um, from your stream. So, you know, I did some Googling and some research. Oh, you uh, checked him out? Yeah, I checked him oh, out. So, oh, cool, cool. I'm like- uh, What'd you find? Tell us. 
Well, he was a rebel. I mean, he was a Ugandan. I mean, I'm here in the, we're both here in the States. So, you know, we, we only right. get so much info, but I know he was from Uganda. Supposedly he came down to Zanzibar, got part of ASP or something like that. And, um, but my question, someone, like, like I asked Rashid before, I said, do you think John Okello went too far? Because, you know, he demanded that they killed all the Arabs that are 18 and above, you know. Um, you, you, you know I, 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 I was like, okay. I mean, like, he said he thinks he went too far. I said, but it would be hard to negotiate with somebody who they, who's oppressed in slavery, right? Right. And see, he, I, I agree with you on that because... I mean, look at Rome. I mean, I, I hear a lot of people talking about Europeans and stuff like this. But if you look at Rome, that's literally what they did. They wiped out the whole community if, it, if you didn't get down with the way they wanted you to get down. So if he took it too far, I can't say. I mean, all I can say is what happened afterwards. Did they well, get that? You know what I'm saying? What happened yeah, afterwards? They, they were, they, you know, he freed them, but, you know, they stabbed him in the back. You know, yeah. before they, yeah, yeah, before yeah, they, they kicked they kicked him out from Zanzibar, kicked him from Tanzania and Kenya. You know, Wangaland did not accept him back, so he had to go back to his village in in Uganda. I uh, I think I know why they would do that because I mean, like, even though a lot of people like to say the ends justifies the means, but at the same time. Do you really want to have that person or that individual that could possibly do that to you as well? Yeah, but he, but would you consider him a hero though? He saved the <laughs> blacks there, the black people there, freed them from slavery. Think about that. Yeah, like I literally mean, freed them. If I guess if I was living there, I guess I would say he was a hero. I don't know if I would call him a pookie, but I definitely say he he definitely uh, no no in a, in a, in a, not in like in a bad way it, like the way they ended up you know he ended up being dusty is <laughs> because he was a pookie that's how even though he did a great job right freeing those people yeah but at the end he still they had to treat him like a pookie yeah but at the same time that just to me i feel like uh what he did whether we agree or disagree on how he did it the end results where they got their freedom but then they turned on him. So it's like, if he wouldn't have done that, would, would you? do you think they would still be in the situation they were back then now? It, uh, the place wouldn't be like it is for those Africans, that's for sure. Then, I, like I said, I guess the ends justify the means. Exactly. Let's have uh, the East African. East African, welcome to the Afridamus Report. East African Shout out to my know. Borana brother. What's good? Yeah, what's up? What's up? Yeah. Thanks East for African. Are you, uh, thank you for calling mm. in. Uh, are you a yeah. are you a Bantu too? No, I'm Oromo. Oromo. Oh, yeah. okay. All right. What do you want to add on to this? Are you familiar with John Okello's revolution in Zanzibar? No, just a little bit, yeah. Just a little bit. Okay. What do you think about it? He came in, freed, you know, those people from those Omani Arabs. And, you know, even though they treated him like a pookie, kicked him out off. So, you know, uh -huh. um, I read where they said, you know, the Oromos also, you know, during those times, they were also, you know, some of their people were enslaved. Mm -hmm. Are you, is this true? Well, I don't, I don't read. Really you never read that. that? No, I mean we had fight with like Somalis and uh, other tribes. And, oh, okay. Uh, sometimes they could be, uh, they could get you and uh, they use you like in the farms and stuff like that. Yeah. Oh, okay. So uh, about the Arabs, uh, I think the guy didn't go far because. Ooh, uh, uh, John, there. wait, John, John Okello, you don't, you said. Yeah, I should ask you that. So you don't think John Okello went to, went far? No, no, no. Because okay, uh, explain. Guys, Go ahead. Uh, because these guys like they they were so brutal. Uh, mm -hmm. um, they could like chop you, like chop your heads off. They could, mm -hmm. they were raping our women, um, and stuff like that. So it was. Uh, <laughs> I couldn't say. I can't oh, the say Arabs. The Arabs were doing that. Yeah, they they were chopping off. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, the the ads and stuff like that. There are books that you can read about that. Right, so right. I think, uh, I've read some of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
uh, there are some they could also castrate the guys yeah so you, you know about the men so i think it was justified man so okello was justified in his in his action yeah definitely yeah okay okay um, yeah. Uh, come come uh, yeah what's up man uh, you speak, uh, you speak Oromo language you speak Oromo? No, no 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 i don't you don't yes, speak Oromo? How you claim that you're Oromo? Well, well Rashid, Rashid, uh, see, I can't ah, Rashid, speak Oromo. Everybody said that's the African man. Some, some of I, us I can't speak, speak, I can't speak. So, so Rashid, Arabic. you heard, Rashid, are you hearing what East Africa and Ketch are? They both believe that, hey, you know, um, yeah. John Okello didn't even go far enough. You know, he went, after that was, you know, when you kill 2,000, when uh, you kill, oh, you say, oh, kill right. everybody, right? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a, you know, like you, you don't Jamoni. believe. Yeah. I'm had a, I'm had a, yeah. But guys, 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 this is an English show. Sorry, <laughs> but but let's let's keep it English. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let me just English. Russian. I was uh, just, you know, when I say I just say hello to him in his language. So uh, when he said Oromo, that's why I only say hello. No, so, not uh, but but you guys were turning it into a no 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 I don't Oromo Oromo show and I can't speak Oromo. No, you no, have to give me. Yeah, you'll have to give it's me Somali. 24 hours. Let me go study my Oromo. Okay, okay, so then, you have issue with Somalis, right? Yeah, let's speak English. Okay. okay. So, 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 Rashid, did you hear what uh, the East African said? He said, yeah, like there were fights, but some the some, the Somalis also did enslave the Oromos. And no, Somalis. it's not. It's not true. It's not true. I think he's not. He's not uh, the Oromo uh, that we talk about. He's living. Maybe he came from the northern part of uh, Oromo tribe, which is uh, wait what what the, the um, with the Amharas. He doesn't he doesn't even speak Oromo language. Well, you could be a Oromo no, no, and Oromo, you don't speak Oromo, it. it no, like it, what if he yeah. was raised in the West? No, no, no. Bro, he, 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 no he was he's from Ethiopia, and I, and I understand he came from the northern part of Oromo. Are you Mr. East African? Are you no, from the northern Rashid, part? I'm from, I am Kenyan, man. I'm not. You're Kenyan. Kenyan. You're Boran. Then you're not. A, you're not Oromo. You're Boran. Borana is the original Oromo, man. Are you? Yeah, yeah are but you originally dumb? yes, but they are not Oromo. They are. No, they know, are Oromo. Oromo. They are the original Oromo, bro. Yes. Okay. Yes. That's what I mean. We have also in uh, Randile. Also, is originally so the the original Somalis. They live here in uh, northern Kenya. No, Borana Randile. speak a Oromo language as well, bro. You need to learn. Yeah, but they history. don't. They don't speak the. They don't speak the Oromo that we that we know in Harargue. Uh, you know, in, uh, yeah, in a different, yeah, but it's still Oromo, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro. yeah. Because I speak, I speak Oromo language you know, because you, you, you know, I can, I, I speak Oromo, so okay, I know, okay, okay, Oromo okay. Person, so, 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 Rashid, you, you know, because Kaiser okay, said it here, yeah, let's, yeah, let's get back to it. So, 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 Rashid, you say, I mean, you said 2000 people, but didn't you hear what he just explained here? What those Arabs over time, you know, how many of those Africans they've killed? castrated but there is no evidence that the arabs killed. are you saying they didn't do that i'm not defending oh arabs. Yeah, i'm not defending it. it but the, no, the, the, I, don't, I didn't see the in the that it, i can that tell it, you even catch out catch out being in america catch out did you ever hear a little bit about arabs enslaving africans what they do to them oh yeah it's been brought up a lot yeah in, it's just definitely here in the states it's like you know, depending on the religion, if you want to believe or whatnot. Um, yeah, but it's been brought up here a lot. Yeah, no, Rashid, did, Rashid, you saying this did not happen? When, 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 at what, what, in what year, what time okay. are you talking about? Okay, but, but Rashid, why do you think then these people felt the need for revolution uh, to revolt? But, uh, earlier, I stated that this time was in the 60s. Yeah, the but, colonial, but, uh, but, 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 you know, we had... Even in Kenya, right? Yeah, let me let me first clear out this. Okay. This is this is was in the sixties. You know, the Arabs they did atrocities. They did a lot of bad things in the past. In 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 in. in oh, but even even uh, in the eighties, the Arabs were were doing bad. You know, yes, remember the Janja the Janja weed. Even today, the Janja weeds, What they were doing to the South Sudanese. Yes, yes, I know. They still even messed up in our country. They do. Yeah. Mass, they they the Emiratis and all that. They have issues. We have some issues. I'm not defending the Arabs or anything like that. I'm African. I defend African only. You see. So what I mean is that uh, they they did. They, so this guy, what's his name, John Ekolo, he came from Rashid, another region. Hold on, let me Anigawa, Arab. Stop lying, bro. 
Uh, 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 he interrupted me, man. I, I, I'm, on, I'm on something. So this guy, what was his name? John Ecola came from uh, Uganda when he came to Zanzibar. And later on, even he, he tried to help them out. But they later on turned his, turn his, you know, they, turn, they didn't. No, but, but Rashid, 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 you have to look at his history, right? He came from Kenya, right? Uh, Uganda. Uganda what no, but before he got to Zanzibar, mm -hmm. all those places were, were, were colonized. So it's no surprise to see somebody like him to resent what he's seeing. He <laughs> went, he, he, wait, he saw it in, in Uganda. He left there, came to Kenya. He was put in prison. He went to Zanzibar. He, he's seen the same thing or even worse. Like, are you telling me John Okello is just political thing that, got him riled up to i think he was against the uh, colonialism uh, colon the british colony no but but there was, was something that something was he was saw but I, there is something he, he saw in in zanzibar that threw him off of the edge he was saying that he was called by god uh he was uh, called by god to you know uh, even uh even not turn well, not, not turn yeah, yeah not turn did Edith. say that too yeah he, yeah he said that god called them to do this so yeah. they were kind of kind of a fanat fanatism in their mindset. They were kind of uh, no, but, but Rashid, Rashid, what I'm saying, but Rashid, mm -hmm. I get what you're saying, right? Yes. Even when he was in, you know, uh, Uganda, he was still Christian. Yeah, but, but he was. So he was but, called by God to say, yes. But there is something and, uh, and 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 do and do something. God, hold on, God hold on, Rashid. But wait, say, Rashid, God told me to to do something. That's what he okay. said. Okay. Right, we get that. But when he got to Zanzibar, mm -hmm. there was something he saw happening to the Africans there yes. that, that threw him off the edge for him to even end up talking to the Africans. And they all agreed with him. But do, can we agree that there is many ways to fight, uh, to, fight the, the, to help the people? But not to okay. Say, give us, give us kill a kill every okay. Day, kill okay. Everybody. What do you think? What What do you think would have been the best option in his revolution? Okay, he will. He will have. He will have said, okay, let's fight with those who are armed, who those who are in on the top positions, but not the civilians, not the people. But who, but, but, but who, those Arabs were. They, they did not spare the African babies, though. But the, the African the, children were slave and slave too. But but can we agree that everybody is not like uh, uh, bad? Oh wait wait wait! I I get that, but what I'm saying is right. Mm -hmm. Okay, they are they enslaving the African, they but they but they were enslaving the African babies. They did not spare them. You see, those now we talk about an ex slave trader. You have to understand huh? that this is a slave trader mentality. He's going yeah, to they were enslaving the, the African babies. You are telling. That He's John Okello, he should reason with, with, <laughs> with them. You know, like now, when you're speaking yeah. to a slave trader, you you can't reason with them. This is the mentality of the slave trader. They will make excuses for their Arab religion. Of course, he's Muslim, right? And I'm also Muslim. Shall, uh, shout out to Muhammad, uh, peace be upon him. But th these Muslims and these Arab lovers will always defend their master. You see, they even face the Arabs when they're praying. Why? Because it's the mentality. They must save and protect the Arab. No, so, no, for example, this brother, I think you are Arab. Stop lying, brother. You are Arab. Just accept it. Who's, who, I'm not Arab. I'm Somali. I'm, I'm Somali. I'm not Arab. I'm not Arab. Are you a Chinese? No, but, uh, but, but, but Rashid. Rashid, I was asking, Rashid, yes. what option do you, because, like, mind you, these people were oppressed big time. I mean, he just came from Kenya but, you know, Kaiser, let me tell prison you. in the prison. The Mau Mau were putting their lives on the line. You know, they were willing. They would rather die than than let the British continue doing what they you were see, doing. Uh, so these guys, days, uh, these guys, these guys, that's the all. You know, the reason there's a reason why they came to that conclusion because it's not like it just started. You know, five days ago, these people were there for over two hundred years. Uh, okay, let me answer to that one first. But let me say one word only to this guy. What is his name? Kaiser. Mm -hmm. Kaiser, if you want to talk uh, respect, I will talk to you with respect. But if you try to, you know, throw, throw words, Arab. 
Well, I, I can know. also, I can also mess, but I don't want to mess the. No, show guys, yeah, yeah. Let's let's let's, let's, mess, let's be respectful. Yeah, I, I we're don't just don't having wanna, a I conversation. Yeah, true, true. I don't want to tell you anything like that. Curse each other. You know, I I can do that, but I don't want to do it. Hold on, hold on. Guys, you let him speak. But I want respect for this. The show of Adam invited us. He's a mature. He's listening. I can do. I can say many bad words. But I no, no. Know. Let's not do that, guys. Let's guys, like let's mature. be let's let's yeah. mature and let's not don't throw words. Just be respect respectful. I can be. I'm a, I'm a really a bad. I can say bad things in my from my mouth. So I I told you I, we are not Arab. We are never been uh, never been a, uh, slave masters. That's our position. We are Africans. We and we you know it's, it's in Islam is forbidden to enslave people. It's forbidden. So we can no, Islam accepts slavery, though. No, we don't. That's not correct. No, no. No, let's not let's not get into that. But yeah. but Islam does accept slavery. Let's not no, bring Islam into this. this no, we can't trust it. Uh, Even on no, a basic we stuff, brother. we know the truth. Yeah, okay, lying. let me this finish. Let me finish this. Let me finish this. So so in this case, uh, uh, in the case of the uh, Zanzibar, you see when the uh, Omanis were there, uh, first was Portuguese who was there before Omanis. They were Portuguese. Portuguese when they they stayed there for 200 years in Zanzibar, and then the Omanis came. The Omanis stayed there for almost uh, some some time of uh, from 1600 all the way to uh, the state until uh, in uh, to, uh, to 1800 when the British came and took over uh, the island. So the British was there. So the when the British were there, they there was some Arabs who were signing with the those who are you know. Uh, cut off from Oman. They already cut off from Oman. That's why he was rejected. This is true. You're right about that. Yes, yes. they were yes. cut they, off. They cut off. So they 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 live there with. So they become a uh, collaborator with the British. That's why they, that's the only way they can stay there. So I, there was upper class uh, has been created. The the upper class who were Arab, who originated the original people of Arabs and the Africans uh, who were uh, the Bantus came from the mainland. So they've been uh, considered as a second class citizens. So they were also no, Arab no. The Bantus were were third. They made them like yeah, the third. maybe Indian of the first or uh, Persians. So yes, there was class. Yeah, they, they, they were last class. They didn't they have a class, class even. Okay, uh, yeah, I agree. I, will, I can argue. But, but Rashid, Rashid, you know, like I'm glad you spoke about the history of the Omani, these Arabs, right? Yes. Okay, they were not gonna go back because they're not gonna be accepted as we no, saw, right? Yes. yes. Okay. So they wanted to make that place their home. But those Bantus there, those black Africans, that place is already their home. They cannot yes. leave. They don't have option to go anywhere else. So these Arabs also are saying, we don't have option, but we would have to put our foot on you guys' neck on your in your own land. So, so therefore, like if you're saying there should have been another option, what would that option be? They... Because the, the Africans wanted their place. They want to be free. And here's these people saying, no, you know, you know, for you to be free, you got to kill us. Okay, you know, ki killing happened even in Rwanda. Uh, they killed millions from each other. And it, no, it, but those, it, they it, own it, that land together. This other one is foreigners that came you know, and I took cannot over. Just, I cannot justify any killings. For uh, I mean, let's just say deleting, for for deleting. Let's just innocent. delete. Yeah, for innocent people, you know, there could be innocent people there. But so, were they innocent, though? Yeah, this, you know, this the, is the mindset. Of, uh, the you know the people, uh, the people who are you know the, you can fight with the. With but the they people they invaded people. they invaded a land. They took over people's land. When you are in people's land as invaders, are you innocent, though? If you are from the invader class, are you innocent? No, I'm not saying it. I see, like, for example, the people who I'm talking about, we have to differentiate between the... the, the, the <laughs> no, the, but what the, I'm the saying... Leaders, the leaders who have, who have the militaries and the police and so on, or you kill the lady who's selling tomato. Are you going to kill the woman who's selling... Oh, the, uh, that's, the not, that's not what... That, we know that's, that's not what... what. That's what, the, what this guy, Okello, ordered. He said, kill everybody. You see, so that means including anybody of milit military age. If he's if he, if he fighting with the military, that's fine. I'm not. Right. I'm not support. I'm not even defending that. No, but what I'm saying, what I'm saying but is, I'm, I'm not, I'm they, they were they, they, they are they are invaders, that's right? My position. But that's they, my position, they you know. what I'm saying, but they they invaded that land. They are invaders, so you know. Um, they, I mean, they're unfortunately, unfortunately, they're unfortunately, those people, anyone that's born in that invader class, 
you know, you're not innocent as far as this, how the system was set up goes. They're not innocent because who's to say those yeah. kids are not going to grow up and, and oppress these Africans? Right. They're being taught that. Yeah. Yeah. I can't believe we're having this conversation, Afridamas. This is what happens when you free yourself. You must see everybody else as the enemy. Shout out to the Kikuyus, right? Shout out to the Mau Maus and the Merus and Kambas for what they did, right? This is a nonsense that you're hearing right here. This brother over here is from a people that actually what this defied the British uh, lines of, you know, government uh, governing countries. They went to war with Ethiopia, right? Mm -hmm. Did they say, oh, you know, they said people? No, they went to war with Ethiopia and they lost, right. but they wanted their land back. That's what the, his people did, right? So he's out here. He wants to promote this Bantu docility to continue happening so that he can take over the other Bantus. You see, you, you got to understand when people are playing mind games, uh, Afridamas. He is not going to be saying the same thing when it's against the Ethiopians. But when it's against his Arab masters, he must defend them. Because as a Muslim, shout out to uh, Muhammad, peace be upon him. Yeah, he has to defend his people, right? For me, I pray to Arabs every day, right? I, I, I face them every day. Oh, okay. Of course, I'm a Right. So I have to I have to defend my people, but the Arabs, but I don't have to lie. The difference between me and him, as you see, the brother lied about Islam and slavery. I'm a Muslim. I know there's two conditions that you're allowed to have slaves. Either you buy a slave or you catch a prisoner of war. You're not allowed to go and capture people. That is true. But you can have those two conditions. You see, the brother lied, though, thinking that we are not Muslims. Right. You are ex-Muslim, my friend. Afidamas. Thank God you knew that. You see, this is about the lies. And you know what? I almost half lied too. The, my my Borana brother was actually more correct. Okay, Why so don't when you it go came to stay on the topic, hang on, brother. Let me finish, brother. You're cutting me off. Uh, so when it comes to the let's say Oromo history uh, versus Somali, they used to have skirmishes. So sometimes what would happen is they would catch some Oromo women, obviously, and then kill the men and then steal them. And sometimes the Oromos would do something similar to them. So I was kind of disingenuous on that part. I didn't present the full history. But the point is, the brother here is not giving the full truth. The truth must come out and let us free. Yeah, because uh, Rashid, I was gonna Rashid, you guys were was like Somalis. You guys fought full blown war with the British, the Italians, and even the Ethiopians, and the French, and, and the French. Yeah. You know, like okay, you guys did, okay, but you guys did not negotiate for freedom okay. exactly okay, against yeah. people that was okay, right? them. okay, let me talk. Let me explain. I, I I was listening to this guy too. Okay, Somali is only one tribe. You see, we are one tribe with one language, right? And we, uh, we are brought to have one country, and we are all Muslim, alhamdulillah. So what we did, we fought with Ethiopia, who has 42 tribes, 42 tribes. We fought against them, and we captured all the way to Jigjiga, right? Because he brought this, I don't want to go out of topic. Yeah, but what I'm saying, I, I know, I, I, I know that, this. hold on, Rashid. Rashid, I, mean, I know that you guys did that. Let me clear Rashid. that, let me clear that. This guy is a Kenyan, he's a Kenyan. But Rashid, okay, let me talk. you're missing let me, the point let me, here, let me, Rashid. Hold on, no, no, you're let him, let him. I didn't interrupt you, please. hold on, I didn't interrupt you. No, no, one second, please, Rashid. The point is, you Somalis went to get back what you believed was your land. It's yours. Your mm -hmm. it's, it's ours. Now, it's ours. When the Bantus, the Okelo, the, the half Nile or okay. half Bantu, went to free speech, I didn't, speak, I didn't the look, Arabs, you okay. say it's wrong. Okay, let me, so you guys, okay, okay. military, it's okay, but the okay, Bantus let me, uh, let me talk then. Let me talk. Let me explain. Okay. In in, in the, this area uh, uh, so that Somalia fought for, is is it belongs to us. Even today, it's a Somali region, it's called. And the president is uh, is, uh, is Mahmoud Omar. I mean, uh, he, uh, yes, uh, his name is Omar. He he is the uh, he is the president of that region, and they call it Somali killing, Somali killing. So we that is our own land if we fought it for. Okay, when uh, when it comes to K uh, Zanzibar, I didn't defend him. The Arab, I didn't defend it. I, did I did, uh, Afrodama, did I defend it? No, I didn't defend no, it. No, no, but but you are. Uh, the thing is, I right? Admit, but I was, no. I was against. I was. I said, you know, you in, when you when somebody tell you a story, right? You will agree some of it. Something, something, some. some and, okay, and so you let me ask you a question, uh, Rashid. So, so we are all so the in, same in this matter. In this matter, hold on. In this matter, I said I agree that they fight back. I'm not saying I didn't agree with that. I didn't defend in the Arab. The Arabs they came to to uh, to uh, the Omani came to uh, to Somalia. They occupied also land from us. I don't defend them. Did I defend them? Yeah, for them no, but, but, but Rashid, 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 the yeah. point is, right, mm -hmm. that those lands that you guys fought for, even Ogaden region, all of that, right? Yes. 
you guys did not compromise you fought you went all out and fought for full it yes. you fought you you full scale war you fought you fought the british you fought the uh yes right the, you fought the italians you fought the french i think i believe you guys fought even the portuguese yeah, but and, and for the land right but but but, but okay and these people did not even enslave you guys mind you these bantus were enslaved for over 200 years yeah, plus and now you are saying you are right. say, so you are you are but you are using excuses to try to say no it's not this is that no like, i agree uh, Afrodamos. i say i agree that they fight back i didn't say they they know no, they, the, no they, go but you were saying he went no, too I far they went i just said that i didn't what agree wrong that with kill the... everybody you see i didn't say that i didn't agree that kill everybody even when you go to a war you save the children and the women and you save the other people. Yeah, he didn't say kill the children. He said 18 and 18. above. That means 18 is uh, what? 18. 18 years old. He 18 can he, fight. 18 can fight in military. Yeah, but he military. killed. He said, kill, and he said don't rape only a virgin woman. But rape, I mean, he meant maybe rape other women. So what I, so I Rashid, let me ask I you support him. I support him that they fight back with the with those. Now, Rashid, you know the same thing happened when the Somalis invaded Ethiopia. They did rape women. They did kill children. So uh, are you going to hold them accountable and say that was wrong? Where do you have that? Where, where do you have that? What is the proof? There's a, I have the proof. Show, show us. Bring it there. Show it. Show it to us. Okay. I'll show, I'll show you. Yeah, bring proof. it. Okay, uh, bring it. Just don't throw words like that. Just show, show this, the, bring the proof. This brother here really thinks that no Somali raped any kids or women. No, really. they, well, bring it. Bring, <laughs> the, bring it. Bring it. Okay. Did, okay, brother. Bring it. Yes. Don't just you know throw and words. Didn't, and didn't uh, the, the road leader say uh, go bring and kill every, bring every, so, every every Isaac? Do, do you support him? No. Look, Somalis is one tribe. Is well one tribe. No, no. That, he said go kill the Isaacs. No. And he said uh, that's kill our, them and that's a family. Look, that's a family. We that's a family. Do you, do, are you against We're that? We're talking about families. This is family. This clan thing is a family. We no, are no, no, in Kenya, tribe. Isaac is a separate tribe. Brother. Look, we are one yeah, tribe. They're a separate tribe. So, look, they don't Somali want to be part of the Somali. Hold on, hold on. Somali are one tribe. Let me tell you that Somali. Are Hold on. In Kenya. Uh, uh, in Kenya. My question here is, what is too? What would be considered way too far to fight mm -hmm. for your freedom? Like you know, let me ask Catch Out. Like Catch Out. I mean, Catch Out. You, you know, like your, you know, you you know the story about slavery. I'm sure you know you are not sad about hearing what John Okello did. Here. Actually, I, I hate to admit it. Um, this happened in 1964, so right. right, the civil rights movement here in the states was still going on. So I can understand why they would want a story like this to be buried. Because I'm telling right. you, I never heard of the guy until. Oh the yeah, day. they want it buried. They want it. Right. You want it to be dis to disappear. Could you imagine a, a, an, an African going around, basically saving other Africans? I mean, mm. you know, it's like uh, hello. Yeah, go ahead, brother. Go ahead. It's, it's, it's just something. It's just something that uh, I feel that they don't want other Africans to hear about. Because then, oh my God, I'm catch up, catch up. The insurrection against other people who are enslaving or keeping the people down or whatnot. So, you know, I, like I said, I heard about the Arab slave trade with Africans, and I heard, you know, over here in the states, we, you know, we were told that it was worse going east than it was going west. So. Now that I'm starting to hear a little bit more information about it, I don't think he went far mm -hmm. enough. Catch, catch yeah. Let me give you so, uh, one second, brother. Let me just give context of East Africa so you understand. In East Africa, there are some tribes. The pure Bantu tribes are very docile. They have a gene to allow anyone to walk over them. These are people from Congo, from Tanzania. They're mixed with Arab a little bit, but they, they have the docile gene. Now, in Kenya, you have the Bantus, like Kikuyus, the Kisis, right? Uh, you have the people like the Kamba. These, because of the admixture of the nylots, right? And I guess some Kushite genes as well. They are a lot more what you call warrior people. This is why the Kikuyus didn't allow themselves, the British or anyone else, uh, regardless of clans, right? Kikuyu have been fighting with all types of people, with the Oromos, with the Somali, with the, with the Kisis, with the Maasai for land and domination. So what this brother over here wants most Africans in East Africa to be like the docile Bantus. The, the Bantus are very docile, Kachol. I, I, when I say docile, I mean they don't have a fighting spirit inside of them. So th th that's why the difference between the Ugandans and the Kenyans versus the Tanzanians is the Ugandans are mixed with the Nilots, right? Just like Idi Amin as, as an example. So this this warrior gene makes them less docile. That's true. Like, I agree with you. 
Right. So the thing here is, right, brother Rashid, he did not go far enough. When you're fighting for your freedom, you must do whatever it takes to get it. And that's no, the reality. Teresa, I, I, I agree with you. You see, I agree with you. And I agree that I, I, I didn't say that they don't, they don't need to fight back. I was supporting them. I was supporting them. That I, the Omanis, they were, you know, invaders. They came there. You see, they, they were invaders. I never supported. I never supported. Uh, I was, uh, you know, I, uh, they, that's why I said earlier, he was not here. I said that they even came to Mombasa, to Mogadishu. They occupied all those lands. You see, I never supported. Yeah. Rashid, the issue is, right, you but said you went to... Me, I, you myself, I support, the, I support the Africans, tribes. Rashid, let, let me... Rashid, ask you Rashid, wait, Rashid, you said you support, but Rashid, I, I have a feeling that you wanted John Okello to just go and discuss this with those Arabs back then. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, like one minute you say you support them, but... Yeah, I, but support, I'm not, but I didn't support them to kill okay, everybody. Okay, let me, let me, let me, okay, let me ask, you know, you know, the, the other people. Okay, East African and catch up. Do you guys, from what you're hearing, do you think, okay, Rashid said he supported John Okello, right? But do you guys think he really su supported him? Supports no, him no. from the way he's talking? No, I think uh, Rashid is like on the fence. He doesn't... Uh... <laughs> Okay, doesn't go want to okay, come go clean, you know? so that <laughs> because you know what was happening at the Kenyan coast yeah uh, -huh. uh before when the arabs came they were they were like small in number so they started like converting people and then they would use these guys to enslave other africans mm -hmm. so uh with the somalis i think they also did the same with with them they used some somalis to enslave other africans so i think that that's... okay where do you have proof for that no, it's not their books. They are very many no, you're right. Jamoni, books are Jamoni is correct. Their books, and even us, the Wangas, mm -hmm. we, we were working with, with the Swahili and Arab traders to sell other you know, Africans. This is ridiculous. Right. Rashid, you need, you need to. Funny. You, you cannot support yeah, our Somalis. Okay, we are, Somalis. Afri we are African. How are we enslave another African? Tell me. No, that. no, 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 no. Rashid, Rashid, wait. What about uh, Al Shabab? We have Al Shabab today. No, they today I'm not talking about. We're talking about history now, right? No, this no, is. But this okay, Lord, that was in a long, long time ago, Rashid. There are plenty of people who are still alive from that yeah, time. Shabab, you know, Al we Shabab, have to talk about also... reality, right? We have to talk about reality. Rashid, about books, reality. About the history. <laughs> we have to talk about the history. We never no. enslaved any tribe. We never enslaved. No, any uh, tribe. Rashid, you, you know, you know the, the reality yeah. is. The reality is, is that you know the Muslims. You know, don't you know? We're not it, talking it, about it, religion. We're talking about no, but we're not talking it. about religion. But you're using. I feel like it's still it's a stigmatism that the Muslims did no wrong in the slave trades, when we all know they did. No, they did. They did. The Omani okay, were Muslim. So, they did wrong. So once yeah, we agree to all that, that, I feel like everything else is just no, 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 you know, brother. You know. Look, I, I was talking. Now you're African American, right? Yes, I am. Okay, imagine now if you come to a to a town where all white people are, are you gonna order kill everybody? Uh, I'm the wrong person. No, to ask but, wait. Are you going to say, are you going to say, I'm the wrong person to ask that question right now, bro. Yeah, but you, you, know, you know, what, what, I'm, saying okay. is, what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, they were seen as oppressors and okay. So you kill, you kill all the Okay, people. okay, wait. Okay, Rashid, Rashid, hold on. Let me, let me, hold on. Catch up. Hold on, Rashid. Hold on, Rashid, Rashid. Hold on. Hold on, Rashid. Let me give you an example, right? Okay, like catch up. Let's say this was back in the, 60s or so right he he goes like he comes from the united states in the south and mm -hmm. this, all this struggle is going on and he never knew he didn't know that the black people in zanzibar or elsewhere are going through even worse thing they're still literally slaves he goes there he's pissed off at what he's seeing here in the states he goes to that place and he sees you know, yeah. people enslaved, and he had he had the power to do something to the people that are enslaving those Africans. Ah, uh, what do you think you would want to do? What if you could? I think I would. Me personally, yeah. if I had the balls and the and the confidence that Akello did, I would be doing the same thing. You know, it's not like he just went in there and said, "Okay, kill everybody." He's no. You know what I'm saying? He experienced. He, no, he said that. He, he said that. 
He no, was, uh, Rashid, he saw something. He didn't just he go saw, there and he, say he it. He was going all yeah. through. The, from, yeah, cut, from what uh, I've learned, all, he was going all, all through. I think you missed it. Not only Zanzibar, but also other islands. He was seeing a lot of stuff that, you know, wasn't brought to life. You know, hey, hey brother, uh, look. Uh, you know, uh, 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 just going there and say, hey, I want to kill everybody for no reason. There's a reason. <laughs> Unless you're but, crazy, or yeah, you know, catch all. He said Nat that. Turner, I think you but... missed it. Uh, <laughs> I think you missed it. Uh, the, uh, the 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 I mean the story, and John Ecola said, "Kill everybody." That's what he said. Yeah, that, 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 yeah. That, when did no? He didn't say everybody. He said well, right. he didn't say eighteen. He said eighteen to twenty-five. Yeah. No raping. I mean, this is what. Is no, no. He reported. said he said no raping. He said don't rape only virgin women, virgins. Uh -huh. Only well, virgin. Said that. Hold on. Well, well, you know, if you're going to make that argument, at least he said that because according to history, when the Arabs were doing their things, it was anything goes. I ask you the same question. I said, do you kill all, and I, and I'm telling all you, the white people? And I'm, and, I'm, and I'm telling you, Rashid, I'm, I'm like this. If uh -huh. if they're doing some dirt and I have the power to do something about it, yes. You kill everybody. Uh, even if necessary. As, as, uh, no, by Haiti. Haiti, right? See, uh, listen, Rashid. These niggas have mm -hmm. been enslaved yeah. by the Omanis, the Portuguese, the British, and also the Germans. This was the first right, time right. that they actually feed themselves. So the thing that worked, you're against it. Can you can you hear that, guys? The one thing that freed these niggas is a thing that he's against. <laughs> like it makes no sense. Haiti, I shout out to Haiti. They you they they go back into the dusty African voodooism and they they consulted Oshun and Ogun. And, and those niggas said, Yo, let's kill the white man. Guess what? Haiti was the first black republic that was free from slavery. Shout out yeah. to Haiti. Right, Shout this whole docility of trying to reason with your oppressors, nigga. If you got you got chains on my neck, whatever happens to you and your offsprings, <laughs> pray to your dusty Arab god in, in the east. No offense, I have to agree. Well, Rush, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's funny. I mean, I didn't mean I to laugh. Thank you for bringing up Haiti because a lot of people don't know that. Yeah, oh no, it, it will bring the Haitian story too. You know, Tushan Lovator, because I, I noticed that most people don't know about these stories. There's because, like John Okello, like I said, his stories literally they want it to disappear. Yeah. Like, oh, aren't you surprised to find out he even existed? Thank you for having Black History Month. Now I understand Thank why you. we have it. Because, you uh, see? like I said, if this would have not, I, I would have died not knowing that this guy actually set some people free when he was Ugandan. He wasn't a local. He was somebody from the outside looking in. And once he got in there and saw what was going on, he was like, no, you can't do my people. I don't know. You know, I hear a lot of people right now arguing about their tribes and this and all and all that. Right. Because, I mean, in the end, do you think a white man really cares or, or, or an oppressor cares where you come from? They all see you as one. So it don't matter. And then they use the funny thing about it is with the Arab situation, you know, um, Kaizo, you said uh, you brought up Haiti, you know, and anybody knows a little bit of history about Haiti, you know, um, I would like to try to draw a parallel a little bit because in Haiti, you know, when they were getting their independence, it was the blacks fighting the colors and the colors fighting the French and the French fighting the blacks and the colors. You know, it wasn't until they realized, OK, yeah, I might be colored. I might have a little bit of white yeah. or something or whatever else in me, but we're all being seen the same and we're all being oppressed by the same. Let's get together and do something. And that's really yeah. what he did. And he did this in 1964, which is really blowing my mind because mm -hmm. this is during the civil rights now, movement. Catch, in the catch, let me give an example. So one of my tribes, the Kisis, right? Unfortunately, we weren't high IQ like the Wangas. So we got massacred. One million of us got be, uh, fought by the British. We had those dusty nilotic genes in us. So we fought back against the white man. Unfortunately, one, one million of us got killed, right? But you see, we had the spirit to fight back. My other dusty tribe, the Wangas, we worked and collaborated with the British because we knew we couldn't win. So you see, that's why I got this dual mentality over here, right? And that's why I can see from both sides. But at the end of the day, I respect Okello. Shout out to the uh, the Ugandan for saving uh, the Zanj people, right? And also, you know, you have the other the other people like my my Burana brother over there, right? They have also been a powerful people that never allowed themselves to be ruled. When the Ethiopians tried to, uh, you know, uh, you know, do some bad things to the Boranas, right? Uh, they fought back, right? So. This is what you need, like non docile genes over there, right? You know, the fact that my brother, oh, brother oh, is what oh, 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 hold on, hold on, guys. Well, let me make an announcement, guys. Please don't hesitate to, you know, hit that, uh, you know, reparation button down there, whether it's the like or the cash app. You know, all sort of reparations yeah. are accepted during Black History Month here. I mean, 
Uh, yeah. yeah, guys, drop. Uh, okay, drop yeah, Kaiser, back. let me ask you. The Mumba, you know, you know, you're from Kenya, right? Uh, uh, you see I'm not Mombasa? from Kenya. I'm, okay, I'm not Kenyan, but go ahead. Oh, yeah, yeah, please hit the hit the hit the reparation button. Oh, you're not from Kenya. Thank you. I, I'm not Kenya. I'm Wanga. I don't believe in nation states, but go no, ahead. No, okay, okay. Let's say you are from Kenya. Okay, so uh, Mombasa is still you have Arabs, right? You still have. They never. Mm. Uh, they never, uh, I mean, uh, killed the, those yes, Arabs. They're who, still there. They're yeah. still there. So what's the, the because I've never been to Mombasa. Uh, so what okay. was the difference? What's the difference? What the, the Kenyans are not. What's the difference between the what was the difference between the the Arabs in Mombasa and the Arabs in Zanzibar? It's actually the difference is the people that went there. So you see the different Mombasa is you have the Kenyans. And the Kenyans are not docile because, as I mentioned with the, with the admixture of the Nilots, so these people are fundamentally different from the Tanzanians. Even Tanzanians, when they see Kenyans, they say we're, okay, I say we, no, since I'm imagining I'm a Kenyan. They say we are rude, we're more, you know, aggressive. Th that's the difference. The Kenyans won't allow the Arabs to take over, have any kind of economic power. But the Zanj, you know, there's, we know who the Zanj is, right? People from Zanzibar and that Zanzibar. whole peninsula, they allowed it. So the difference in Kenya is we're ruled by the Kikuyus. Shout out to the Kikuyus. Look, I like Kikuyus because they're, they're, they're warriors, right? I, you know, I, I say shit about Kikuyus, but I respect that shit. That's the main difference. Yeah, guys, please uh, hit the uh, hit, hit the uh, super chat, hit the cash up, and support Black Stream Media. Shout out to you, Atticus, my Kenyan brother. Uh, shout out for that four pound super sticker, guys. So you, support. We're giving edutainment over my, here. But yeah, sometimes is a man. man that's uh, what you confuse me, man. Sometimes you say you're not Kenyan. You don't belong. You don't believe that you don't. You're Kenyan. What what what's the reason you are against uh, to be a Kenyan national? Oh, right. See, I don't believe in nationality. I'm a pro Wanga. I want the, the return of the Wanga kingdom, aka the Buganda mm -hmm. kingdom. Uh, we want it back from those okay. Tutsis who have taken over our countries in Uganda. So we. Hold on. The Buga Buganda, is that the one? Is that the, the gay one? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, you know, that was actually <laughs> was that? Half, just like, that, that was like our half Oromo, half Bantu brother was gay. <laughs> <laughs> that was the gay one? Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Uh, that's a gay one. Um, so shout out. So I want the return of the Buganda Kingdom. I want us to. So you are over. so you are half uh, Oromo, you say, right? No, no, no. Twenty five percent. Shout out to JT. Twenty five percent. So so you are twenty five percent uh, Kusheti. Uh, no, more than that. But in terms of uh, Oromo, twenty five percent. Yes. 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 Okay. So, yeah, because Oromo and um, Somali yeah. and Oromo and Borana, we are we are related because of uh, Kusheti tribes. So, uh, so you see, you see, West Africans, you guys thought we are the ones who have a, a messy, messy hidden slave story. East Africa, I'm just opening a little bit of a uh, 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 door. You see how the crazy stories are coming out? Wait till I bring more East African. You know, like the blacks, the blacks like to accuse us to say you all sold us. The blacks don't even know what's going on in East, what went on in East Africa. Them, if they catch out, uh, once you guys find out what's what went on there, you'll be like, man, West Africa, you guys didn't do anything. But you know, <laughs> Afradamas have a question. Uh, you see, the, the 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 we you know still we have Arabs in the all North Africa is part is Arab, right? Right. Nigeria, Morocco, uh, Tunisia, Egypt, Egypt. And you see, uh, 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 what is his name? Gaddafi. Gaddafi. Shout out to all my Egyptians in the chat. <laughs> okay. You see the, uh, so all those are Arabs, right? And many people are, uh, when they say in Africa, they say the 54. So they're including the, they're including the, uh, the Arabs in the North. You know, you never hear any people, even you hear from African American when they say, oh, the 54 countries of Africa, the 54, that they're including the Northern part of Africa, which are Arabs. So Africa. Yeah, but if you if you if you sit down, like let's say you talk with somebody like a black American, you break it down to them, then they would say they would say the north is not Africa. If you still, tell them, the if you break down the history to okay, them, they will say the fifty-four. It's still, people will no, say no, but they would minus it. That's my point. <laughs> they would minus it. Al, am I lying? Was it, I'm sorry. Uh, no, I he's saying like you know, like black people would say Africa has 54 countries. Like they would count the not African countries, the Arabs. I said yes, they do. But if you tell most blacks here the history, the real history, then they wouldn't count them. For me, so if I answer that, the the, the Northern Africans are the Northern. Right, Arab, 
<laughs> they are Africans, yes. I'm on the, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of on the fence with that because, um, like you said, here in the states. Well, you, you want know, to be. Like, uh, oh, go ahead. I was gonna say here in the states, you know, we we know about the uh, the Morse and how they came through North and you know North Africa and went up in the. Well, Spain, the Morse you know? got the Morse lost and they got kicked out, just like John Okello. They got sent back to their villages. To their villages. <laughs> That's the truth. That's what happened. The Moors got kicked out of Spain. They came to North Africa. They got kicked out of there too. They got sent back to their villages. And many people end up in Morocco. And yeah. well, there's a, yeah, they, they, there's many because there's many that came there, but they still the Moors were mostly mixed too. You have, don't forget that. Yeah, they, right, 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 right. they were mixed. That's true. That's true. Yeah, they were mixed. Right. So, not... so uh, you see, uh, you see now the what I call it, Gaddafi was cheered as an uh, African leader, uh, right? At, at some point, even mm -hmm. I've seen a Ghanaian or Nigerian uh, cheer him as a great leader, and but he's an Arab. Imagine. So there's a contradiction always there when we are saying the Arabs and this and that, and then we are also cheering some of the leaders as uh, as African leaders. So. Yeah, even but Gaddafi, even Gaddafi, Gaddafi, even Gaddafi, Gaddafi, uh, even Gaddafi, he apologized for Arab, Arab slavery, Arabs enslaving Africans. Yeah, but he, but he was an Arab. Yeah, that's what he, 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 he apologized on behalf of the Arabs. So he was accepted as an African. Where yeah, but 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 they still. Well, people uh, saying but, that North Africa as, are not Africans. No, no, no. What I'm no, saying. No, no. I, I, yeah, I think, I'm, I, I think they are, they're in they're Africa, Africa, of course. Nobody's saying they are not. We're saying, but that still doesn't negate the fact that, yes, these people did, in fact, enslave dark skinned Africans. It's slavery still happening. Happens. It's still happening today. No, it's still, you know, slavery happens every single day, even. Even when you come are, on, Rashid, uh, uh, Rashid, uh, come on, day. come on, Rashid. It, it happens in Libya today. Today, Libya. Okay, who are, they, who are they doing it to in to, Libya? To, to, to us. Even even to, to Somali. Uh, I think there's Soma uh, Somali. No, uh, yes, yeah, you're right about you're right about that. They, they, they enslaved even Somalis. I'm talking about in Libya today. Yes, many uh, Africans. Uh, and it's lived. So that's why I say it happens even today. It happens everywhere, especially in, in this area. So so I'm say, I'm not saying that they don't, but what I was talk, saying is that the North Africans are sometimes say they are Arab, and sometimes they say we, we are saying that, I hear that people say they are not African. So Af is, is Africa a color or Africa is a region? That's what I want to know. Is Africa is a color? So. Or, or it's a regional thing. It's, it's, a, it's, the, it's you know the, what? whoever lives in the map of Africa is African. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, we, we, Rashid, that's a good question. I'll have to do a show on that. I, I want people to discuss yes, please, that as well. Because, yeah. uh, because you see that people will say, okay, we, we, the, 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 the North African, they sit in the African Union in, in Addis Ababa. They're sitting there, the Mubarak, what is his name, the, the president of, e of Egypt. Al Sisi. Sisi, he's sitting there in the African Union. And he's an Arab, so so at the same time, one time I think Al Sisi is mixed. Yeah, although he's an Arab, I think a lot of them are mixed. It's like because you see, uh, uh, I think Al Sisi is uh, like original Egypt Egypt people, like Coptic, Coptic and Arab, like he's mixed. But, you know, for them, you need to understand this, right? The the the, the there is no Arab uh, uh, DNA. Is whoever speak Arabic is an Arab. Well, the Omanis are Arab, if you even ask I've us. Even I've seen a darker look, guy. More look, I have seen even Ra Rashid, a Rashid, I'm not going to accept that because I'll tell you right now, they know the difference between who is a beat and who isn't. So there is definitely Believe an me, Arab. Uh, Saddam, I've seen, a, I've seen a Kuwaiti, black Kuwaiti lady. I, I, I say to her, are you an African? She say, no, I am an Arab. Yeah, Arab slave, probably. No, right, she right. said no. She said she, uh, she's, uh, she told me she was. She Rashid. Me. She said, I'm the indigenous of Kuwaiti. She, that's what Rashid, she said. Rashid, let me she, ask you a question. She when doesn't know. She, Yemen, she don't know. She said that, uh, do she they, said that he's the indigenous uh, of, of Kuwaiti. Uh, and I said, no, Rashid, Rashid, you are African. You're confusing some things here. Yeah. Let's answer your that's question, That's what I Rashid. said to her. 
Mm. There is Arab as a culture. Yes, you are right. Arab is a culture. So Sudan, mm. um, yes. North Africa, and the right. Arabian Chad, Chad, yes. Yeah, Chad. Yes, yes. But these are not Arabs. These are actually black Africans. Uh, Arabized, Arabized. Yeah. Arabized. Exactly. Arabized Africans. Now, yes. obviously, when a Sudanese man from North Sudan goes to Saudi Arabia, they call him Abid. Mm. That's what yes, happened. Yes, it's true. Even, even to, when yes, a Somali yes, man yes. goes, similar thing is happening to them. Yes, right? yes. Even yes. The, the Ethiopian, same thing. So yes. these are Arabized people, but they're not real Arabs. We know who real. Yeah, because just they, Arabic they like culture. Arab. They, the white Arab. They they don't. Co- they don't. They will always discriminate. So 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 so. But that's what I'm saying, though. Like, so we like we know for a fact. Like when you see an Arab, real Arab, they know the difference, and we know the difference. Yes. Like it's. I mean, obviously, those Omanis knew. Mm-hmm. that those negroes need to be put in chains they didn't bring their own people with them but they yeah, had to put they had to put the negroes in africa in chains mm-hmm. because they couldn't you but know. you know uh Alfred Damas, uh right. the it, now we when you go to oman right i mean if if a brother companion was here was good because he lived in oman he could have cleared for us many things they you know they uh, they say uh, companion uh they tra- uh, what they call it so the the Oman's people they are mixture themselves. They are Look, they have more Rashid, black, at this point black. we don't care we don't care who they are mixed with. We have determined that they are Arab, they've enslaved Africans. Yes, you see, we I are, want to explain we are going to be sending hold on, we're going to be sending them the reparation package. We've confirmed <laughs> it here. Yes, yes, and yes. and we are sending them the reparation package request. You know, like all these mumbo jumbo people talking about Arab gene doesn't exist. We, if you speak it fluently, right, and mm-hmm. you oppress the blacks there, you are paying reparation, point blank. You see, uh, you see the uh, the Arab people, yeah. right? They are they. If you speak with if, you, if the, those like for example in Egypt, I been to Egypt, so they are black, are Egyptian, they are white Egyptian, right? So, but they consider themselves as Egyptians. They don't care. They don't see color. They don't have any. Oh color no! Yes. They, oh no! They do see color. No, no, no. They don't. Mm. They don't. See, between them, no. Between them, no. Between them, they don't discriminate. They they will see they they are Egyptians. Uh, if you go to Yemen, it's different. Yemen people are not like that. They are really bit. Uh, you know, they are not open up. They they discriminate. Well, well Egypt they, Egypt is they, a bigger Yemen country. Is it's Yemen a bigger is country, right? Mm-hmm. So of so course, they, well, they, well, they you are, would expect they them. Different. They are different. Yeah, yeah. They, you would expect them to be a bit more different because they are bigger country. Yes, they yeah. have a now lot more different to, people. So it's, it's so they're not gonna easily practice that. You now, when you go to uh, Dubai and so on, we you see the the Emirati, they are minority, but the majority of the people are from other countries, right? So they open up. So in that case, but, but Rashid, are you telling me that these people in the north, let's say Morocco, because I've been to Morocco, I've, I know what I saw with my own eyes. Yes. You know what I'm saying? I know what I've seen with my own eyes. So are you you are you trying to tell me that no, uh, these people they don't discriminate against against. Uh, Black Africans? Is that what you're trying to say? I never, I never been to Morocco, so I don't know. I cannot tell something I don't, you know. No, I'm just asking lazy. because because a minute ago you were saying, no, they don't do the color thing or discriminate. I'm just asking, like, okay, like, because I know, I know for a fact. You see, what, I know, I know what I saw with my own get, eyes, with my own eyes. Afrodamus, if you know, if you have. We are all black skin. I'm, I'm so black. We get always uh, discriminated by others. This is this is this. No, happens. but but this some it's not everywhere. always. Some places it's just some places. it's have, just it's just uh you know it's it's like the regular. It's like it's there. It's part of the the culture. You can tell by yes. the way they 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 move, right? So I'm just confused by what you are saying because you say no, they don't discriminate by color, but. I know that the color matters a lot. I never been to Morocco. I don't. I cannot. Speak well, not, well, you can watch documentaries. Yeah, you know, it may happen, but I don't know. I cannot. I, I cannot talk about something that I, I never experienced. 
But as we, as an, you see, I, I hate to, to identify myself. I'm not saying it's all of them, but um, it's definitely uh, some type of systematic yeah. way of looking at, you know, black, yeah. dark-skinned African people. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. It might That's happen. like it a might systemic, happen. there's something systemic. That doesn't mean there wouldn't be, you know, some good people who who don't think that way, but I'm just talking about the system, the systematic way of how but I, you know, I have met Moroccan who is a really uh, black Moroccan, but I haven't heard from him that he has uh, prob you know, have discrimination against well, the other day. There was someone, him. a black American that went was is in Morocco when they had to, oh, yeah, yeah, the some guy, African, check, some, check. some. Some that, Cameroonians. That, that guy, yeah, what is his name? Check his yeah. name. Check something. I'm not sure, but you know, like the Cameroonians. These Cameroonians, you know, they, they don't come out during the day, even to go to the park. They have to come out at night what? because of how they are harassed. You know, like they can't come out at night. They wait till uh, daytime, nighttime. That's when the Cameroonians and the, they come out. You know the, the videos. It, happen, it might happen. It might happen. You know, I don't know. It might happen. No, but, this uh, is this is not like a fixed up uh, video. It's it's YouTube. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's YouTube. So yeah, it might happen. They might get issues uh, with discrimination. But I never been. I never been to Morocco. I only can speak those countries that I've been, like uh, in, you know Egypt and so on, and. Uh, but I have seen. I haven't seen those countries. I haven't seen to, um, in Morocco. And and Algeria, Algeria. You but know. they have, you know, they have, uh, they have, they have mixture of a uh, lot of uh, dark skin uh, uh, and Africans live in the southern part of Morocco. Also, they have also in Tunisia. They have also right. Even they have a lot of people there. So it's a mix. They have mixed. Uh, Ethnic groups, the Arab, the the Amazigh. But but how did uh, I know the dark skinned Tunisians? They would tell you their history. They were the slave class. They were brought there for that. Yeah, you know, I never had, I never been to Tunisia also, and I cannot speak about that. But uh, it didn't. It it, it no, but happen. but no, but but my thing is the, the part I was debunking was you were saying no, it's just that. The Arab culture, this is not the skin thing, but we are able to tell the difference. And yes, there are some other African countries like Chad, even the Sudanese, they look dark, but we know they okay, have the Arabized culture. Okay, okay, let me ask you this. We, are, mm -hmm. we have African Union, right? So we have Afri why they don't address if, if there's an issue with discrimination from those countries like you like you say right now well that's if why john, people the, like john uh, but john john people like john okello so how was able to, to see, they want to unite no, but but, but, right? but zanzibar united now they the zanzibar they united with the with tanzania you know no choice they had to because when john okello and the africans rose up against yeah. those arabs and 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 and, and remove them you okay, know, now that brought, Niger, that brought, Niger, that brought, right? that okay. brought unity amongst the Africans there. Okay, Vradamas, two Niger is here right now. I see him uh, pulling. So uh, he believed that Africa to unite, right? Africa to become one country. Okay, in that case. Well, uh, well, let let two Niger give his part. <laughs> I'm sure he his heart he was listening. I, I wanna you know, I want to hear what he thinks about okay, he want to unite because Africa. because I want two Niger. Uh, two Niger, uh, are you there, two Niger? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Tunaya, I want to ask you, uh, Tunaya, are you familiar with the story of John Okello? No. Okay, so John Okello was like, uh, he's kind of like Nat Turner. He's a uh, Ugandan who, he's the one that freed the black Africans in Zanzibar. He came there, he was first locked up by the British in Kenya, eventually left there, came to Zanzibar, and he didn't like what he saw, like the Africans were enslaved there, started this revolution against the Arabs there. And, you know, he ordered that anybody that's 18, 18 years and above for them all to be killed. So the discussion is Rashid thinks he went too far for all that. But Rashid is saying he ordered for everyone to get killed. Others here are saying, no, 
John Okello didn't even go far enough to free his people. He should have gone further. What is your take on somebody who freed a group of Africans who were enslaved for hundreds of years? Um, the people that he killed, first of all, uh, thank you for having me uh, on your channel and uh, greetings to everyone, chat and uh, the viewers. Um, did he, when he said, when he said he killed the other that the 18 and above be killed, is he everybody or just the Arabs? The, well, the Arabs who, because uh, my point is right, because they belonged to the oppressor class there. So by that, they are guilty just simply being part of that group. Do you agree? Yeah, to an extent, if, if it is the oppressor class, then sometimes people have to act to defend their own people. It's Thank just you. what it is. They do it to us all the time. Exactly. That's that's my point. I said, because those people were enslaving those African babies, they didn't care about that. So, but like Rashid is saying, he went too far. He want John Okello to sit there and, and try to rationalize this. He probably saw that he, since they were enslaving Africans just based on being black, so he might as well take action based on being Arab. And the action he took was to get rid of them instead of enslave them too. So you can argue, some people can argue that maybe that's even a mercy because, um, you know, he, had, he, he probably, six circumstances probably required him to do that because if he didn't do that, he probably those people could have posed a threat to him. Right. And I, we know they how African Americans did. suffer this type of things now. Exactly. African Americans suffer these things over and over again. You know, anytime they grow a little bit, they get you know attacked and destroyed again. They, they have to start all over again. And about Morocco, I think I heard people talking about Morocco. See, the thing you have to assume almost everywhere you go in the world. Whenever you have black and white together, there's always discrimination that's going to go on, especially given in the current context when the white people are the more powerful groups or the lighter skinned ones are the more now, powerful. This They're is not the white. This is the Arabs we're talking about. Yeah, they, in, 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 um, this in, uh, in uh, Morocco, they are generally lighter skinned and darker skinned ones. Mm -hmm. And they clearly discriminate against the darker skinned one, even if they don't, try to pretend as if it's not happening. It's very much wait, there. Wait, two Naja, let me ask you this. Two Naja. Do did the Arabs enslave Africans and you know castrate them? Did a lot of bad things to them? Yes, as far as did. you know. Yes, they did. Okay. They like yes. to call it uh, servants, and they, they like to give it a different uh, name that is slightly different from a bit. what the African Americans uh, experience or the African. Uh, that's um, yeah, a bit, a bit, a bit, a bit is the N word for them. Uh, yeah. uh, Tunaja, do you believe that North Africans are Arabs? Are, Africans, um, they, are they Africans? They are African. Most of them are Africans. And some of the, if, the, if you are a recent arrival, it depends. Then you, you can decide that either you are uh, this in ethnically African or you are nationally African. There's a little bit of differences. Some people, like if we go to the UK now, we are nationally African, but we, we may not be ethnically African or tribally African, uh, uh, this is the European, I mean, sorry. So the, there's a difference between people that came and acquired nationality and the ones that originally were there thousands of years. And it, there's a mix of them. And quite a lot of the recent arrivals are now considered Africans. In the context of <laughs> national states, they are Africans. Okay. Just speak, that's what they are. They are Africans. What exactly. can we do? Yeah, some people the, say that they are not Africans, you know, that's why, you know... Yeah, they are, so some people they are say Arab that, some people say that because they are actually talking about ethnically or um, originally African. However, the discrimination occurs from the, uh, um, this in the Arab, uh, this, it doesn't even matter, I don't even call them Arab, the lighter uh, skinned ones against they the uh, African ones, yes. And there are a lot of dark... Africans in all the northern African countries. All okay, of them. I have, I have Egypt. another question. What about the white South Africans? Are they also Africans? The white uh, uh, the, okay. The, the, like I said, if you are nationally African, you are African. But if you are you are not ethnically African, you may be nationally African because you are you belong to that nation, but you are not an aborigin of that uh, continent of, of that region. Clearly, your skin tells you very well that you are not. You know, Americans, even the, the Americans in, in the U.S., they don't necessarily claim that they are aboriginals of 
America. They are just saying that they are citizens oh, of the African, United States. You have to be black. You have to be black to be an African. It, I don't think you have to be black. I mean, it depends on what you describe as black, isn't it? I don't think you have to be black to be African because there are other groups in that have been in Africa for thousands of years that are not necessarily black. And in what timeline do you what, what timeline do you use to demarcate then? The, that's the question. If you want to say, okay, if you have been here for two thousand years, that's when we describe you as African. How do you how do you do it? That's the question. Some and it's based on opinion. Some people there are some people that would just say, you know what? If you are not black, you are not like um, Somali looking, or you are not Bantu looking. You are not considered African. Some mm -hmm. people do that. Even but they I, say I, to us, we, you know, I sometimes surprised when some people say. Oh, you guys, Somalis, you are not African. I say, what are you talking about? You know, we are part, we are African. Well, people. even, even to Niger himself have said that before, but maybe he will change it today, but that's fine. What did I say? <laughs> no, what don't worry. What not did I say I said? Not, what did I say I said? Not, <laughs> don't stop putting that one on me. What did I say I said? What did you say I said now? What did I say? That, that the Somalis were not Africans. Oh come on! I didn't say that. Stop! Stop that nonsense! I didn't say that. It was it was um one other Somali guy that actually said that. He said, "Oh yeah, we are not African. We are related to the Arabs and the Yemenis and all the rest. They are going to get them." I think he was just messing about. No, uh, Tunisia is true. Some be, some Somalis they 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 want to be Arabs. Some 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 mm. Somalis they say we are Arab. Although he's black, he doesn't have an Arabic structure. He doesn't have Arab complexion. And he doesn't even they do even doesn't even speak Arabic language, but he still he will claim to be an Arab. I don't know what I've to seen. Be an I've Arabic. seen. I have videos on that. In fact, I'm gonna bring that. It's not only Somali people in Somalia. There's even some of the people like this very topic we're talking about here. Even Zanzibar, mm -hmm. you would see some of like really dark people, yes. super dark black. They would claim to be Arab, but maybe those people I are don't just confused. Why people running away to be an African? Just well, just African. like the people in America, some that some blacks that claim they are they they run from Africa. You you remember yesterday? Oh, yesterday, yes. Yeah, you know, the topic that they would say, no, I'm not. Like remember, now Turner denied that it would be possible that he would have Nigerian DNA. <laughs> he didn't even want to entertain it. He's, you know, he said he, you know, he's the origin of America. Like, he didn't even want to entertain, entertain it. Despite if the guy lands in Nigeria, people would would think he would ask him what village he was from. But he still, he still, he still denied it. People try to disassociate themselves with what they perceive mm -hmm. as inferior, failure, or something that doesn't give them stature. That's right. You know, that's what we would do. And if Africa starts doing well tomorrow, um, suddenly everybody wants to be African. You well, know. everybody, everybody will say I'm from Africa. Yeah, that, that's what happens. And the question is, um, when everybody is busy denying it, whom are the ones that are going to actually build? You see, those builders are the ones that are really needed now. Um, because well, after well, they build, then the others will join the, the queue later. But uh, in, uh, in Tunisia, in, there is a African. I mean, there is a, a Nigerian tribe. Now they say they are not. They are originally from uh, uh, Hebrew Israelite. They oh, the Hebrew, from, they, Hebrew Israelite. Yeah, they, they they say that they came from Israel. They oh yeah, that's Africa. the Igbos. I, I have a video yes. on that as well. They say that they came <laughs> to Africa. Yeah, they the, the Igbos. I don't know why they're running from Africa. I mean, they are running from to become a. And, and Everybody is running, even from Ethiopia. Some people left Ethiopia years ago, and they were like, some of them tried to go wait, around wait, to Israel. Niger, you know, Niger. They do that. Um, to Niger. Are you saying this because Rashid is here? You picking on Ethiopians? Are you sure no, they were not Somalis no, that no, ran? No, 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 are you? I just, are you sure they were not Somalis? I just saw it recently. Rashid, Rashid, if you were not here, he would say it was Somalis. <laughs> Is it because Rashid is here? If, if, if Rashid was here, he would say there was Somalis. Because what I saw on the video was some lady saying how some of their forefathers tried to get to Jerusalem as their homeland. The, most of them didn't succeed. Or, or she said most of but them failed. Are they Ethiopians? But, well, some Ethiopians, of the Ethiopians, yeah, she said they are Ethiopians. Well, they believe that they are Jews. Jews. Yes. 
Well, I mean, really, histor historically, that's true. They well, said the Israelis, they tried to go back, but they failed. Yeah, that's their land. Well, the evils are making their way there too, so... You know, Everybody hopefully. seems to think that they are all from there. Who, are, who is originally from there? They, they, we really need to stop this thing that we do. You, you, you uh, are given to the massive continent that you are running back to also, a, a desert small land. Okay, Tunaya, what, what do you feel about, you know, some of the West Africans and Central African area people claiming to be from Egypt also? What do you think about that? I mean, why are they running from West Africa? Our West African people are running away too. They are claiming Egypt. What is going on? I, I think what is happening is that anything that attaches them to pre, to increase their prestige, they try to hack onto it. What they want to own the pyramids? Oh yeah, they want to be like they want to be associated with those things. If there was historical evidence pointing to that, you can argue that maybe in history, if you look at the way um, Africa has evolved, the Sahara Desert and all the rest of it, you can argue that yes, there were a lot more people in the northern part of Africa than we have now. Maybe the population there has dispersed. But what we are, the timeline we are talking about here is not like close timeline. We're talking about 6,000, 7,000 years, 12, maybe 12,000 years. So if these people have stories of coming from the north and they want to imply that they are linked to the north, it's ridiculous. You are, you well, are well, 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 they, they, they all do now. Yeah. They've been talking about taking DNAs. Me, myself, yeah, I've been looking to see you know, how I can talk to the doctor to skew the my dna test i'm looking for i'm looking for a place to attach myself <laughs> where, where, where would you you would just claim uh, this is sweden now sweden, yes no, you, oh you yes know? yes yes, very good. A, a, a yes a viking <laughs> yes a viking yeah, oh, I would say I'm from Finland because you know the, the fin. I'm also I'm from Finland. You know, it's weird. You know, the Finnish have different DNA from the Swedish, so I could be like I'm I'm a Finnish. You know, like yeah, I yeah. have a uh, yeah. So I've been looking to attach myself to to one of those places and oh. say me also. Uh, my DNA said I'm from there. I mean, I already have black foot. You know, <laughs> oh, you know that I already, I already have black foot, so I want to look for my next, the next part of my DNA. Where it's gonna take me? My, my, I'm I in, I'm I in Scandinavia. Maybe my Viking ancestry might might show up. You, you know the funny thing, eh? if they were finding bodies in Egypt or in Jerusalem with DNA pointing to sub-Saharan Africans as we are currently today. I would look at yeah, fine, yeah, your forefathers were there before, and even then, you are still African today. But we are not. If there's no evidence pointing to that, and they are just still claiming it. But and I but Tuna, yeah. <laughs> but Tuna, yeah. If you know, now I have seen so many that claim Egypt. So I was like, they don't empty West Africa, oh. <laughs> <laughs> That means there was we don't have any we didn't have any civilization in West Africa. It was just there's nothing there. There's, there's there's nothing. Nothing. Yeah. We're all we are just we are all migrants. We came into but, West Africa. Yeah. You see the uh, you see Afredamas, uh this uh, Egyptian uh, you know the pre what they call it those pyramids and the pharaohs, they were mixing of all Africans. The Af all Africans were there. They were West African, East African, so all of them, they built that civilization. It's Where? Not only in, in you know, the, uh, those, uh, pyram the pyramids. I've been to pyramids. I've seen that. Look. So it's all about all Africans. Look, look here's, the, here's, here's the thing. On mm -hmm. The only way I will start claiming the pyramid, like I said, mm -hmm. if it involves them, you know, um, you know, saying, you know, like... The, all the Africans that claim pyramids will get a check monthly. Sure, <laughs> I would. In fact, I, I just remembered I'm I'm related to Pharaoh Tahaka. Just so you, you know, guys know. Thomas, <laughs> have you been to uh, Have you been to Egypt? I have not. Okay, you believe me? You will see on the structure, right? You will see a West African looking statue, East African. Well, no, I'm not, I'm not doubting uh, it. I'm I'm pretty you sure. Will see, you yeah. will see uh, all kind of Africans are there. So yeah. you can tell from East African to West African uh, body structure you can find there. I've seen West African looking, uh, uh, you know, drawing things. I've seen that. I have seen East African. I have seen uh, different, you know. So that means it's something that is in African. But, but Rashid, Rashid, what I find 
funny. None of these people, they are never related. Their DNA never takes them to or, ordinary uh, Egyptian people. All of them are related to the pharaohs. All these mm. people are royalty. That is <laughs> yeah, the yeah. problem. Yeah, like, right. like everyone is related to the pharaohs. You know, like what's going on? It's not, because not the, the, the ones that they match them with are often from the pharaohs. You see, because <laughs> they, they didn't test mostly ordinary Egyptian. They tend to be testing pharaohs, uh, most of it. However, I think where I think the problem is for us right now is that many black people are not doing archaeology or doing all the DNA tests, going on the ground and looking for their own sites to excavate and actually test these things out so that we can know whether we are there. You can't, you can't just allow other people to be telling our story constantly because they could find a black guy. They were like, nah, I'm not taking that. <laughs> I'm not testing that poxy DNA. Well, I'm not testing you. Want, yesterday, you yesterday so, Turner didn't want to take the test DNA because he said, he, what if it shows up that he's, he has a giraffe DNA? <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> so that's and he did. He wanted to know um, the only if Nigeria has ice cream or you know. I said, yeah. So, so you know, so he can consider moving there. But as long as there's ice cream, oh come on! I think um, it should be fine. If anybody wants to start, you know, uh, he doesn't want to move. <laughs> <laughs> the man doesn't want to move. I'm just <laughs> Africans don't want to be Africans. Many Africans don't even want to be Africans sometimes. So we But they we, don't we, have a choice, do they? Of course they don't have a choice. The, the problem is that denial is just a failure of imagination because if they if they knew what they were doing, they would realize that they're just wasting their time. Okay, uh, wait, to Niger. Yeah, I don't wanna are. I don't want to waste my time. Do you think if my DNA comes and I'm a Swedish Viking would would people believe me or are they going to try to come here and argue? Of course nobody would believe you. It's but really but why not? What? If your dear they come in Viking, they will say, do the test again. And if he comes back again, they will say, do the test again. Do it in all the DNA houses. Because you definitely look West African. <laughs> so, then you can't escape that one. You can't escape your feet on that one, man. They okay. They make you, know, you know how some people can pass for other races? Mm -hmm. That's not you, Afridimos. You can't. <laughs> you can't escape it. You're a black man and you're stuck with it. Well, 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 all these people, I mean, Tunaya, there are people who have been claiming Cherokee, you know, like in high numbers. They look just like me. Oh, yeah. Those ones, you can, you could, you could, you know, disguise yourself. You can be part of them. And uh, so that, oh, yeah, no, I already that, have. I have the Blackfoot certificate, so I think. <laughs> you know, somebody corrected and said it's black paw. No, why do you call it Blackfoot? <laughs> do they have Blackfoot? I'm not sure they have black with black paw. No, they I'm a Blackfoot. I'm a Blackfoot. You know, know but, uh, you know what I've seen uh, to Niger is the uh, North African. I see North African guy took a DNA, and they say you have a uh, Nigerian. Uh, uh, you have. They told him you have a Nigerian DNA. The, and also uh, Spain and the Middle East. So that was his yeah. DNA. It's Morocco. Yeah. They yeah, it's, what you should expect. it's what you should expect. That. Oh, no. They, they, no, those people are trying to deceive us. If I cannot be a Viking, he can be Nigerian. No. No, no I'm, I'm very concerned about Moroccans. Though. Sometimes they, <laughs> you know, no, those ones, they really get on my, they get me a little bit funny because the way they behave sometimes towards Africans is a little bit iffy. And, you know, I, 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 know, I mean, Tuna, you think in the north there, which country is, is, is better? I think maybe Egypt, they're a bit open, right? Because we don't, uh, I don't hear a lot of not. problems. I don't hear a lot of problems, you know. From it's a police state. The... Egypt, you barely yes. hear, you barely see foreigners going go there. It's a police state, and uh, they are really, really aggressive to blacks and uh, foreign uh, you whites are like I saw a white YouTuber. Mm -hmm. Oh there, yeah, oh yes, oh I saw that. Yes, you're they, right. They, they didn't give the guy one breathing space at all. Mm -hmm. so, yes, Egyptians are one of those people you can argue that maybe they are trying to reclaim their sovereignty back they really want to exert themselves, and they, they, if you look at them, they don't do this Arab thing as much. Compared to like Morocco and maybe so mm -hmm. they do it, you would think because they are closer to Mecca, they should be even more. But they are trying to assert their because the, the statues and this the pyramids are staring at them that they have a bigger heritage, so they are trying to reassert their own national identity. So you can see that that's why they are becoming a bit more nationalistic against anybody really 
you know. You know, I've seen in, in, in Tunisia, I've seen Nigeria give a citizenship to many Arabs, uh, like 197. Uh, I think recently. Trust recently. me, they they brought a lot of money to Nigeria. <laughs> 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 you know, you know that's what that's what silly. When I saw people, I think it was Nigeria somewhere. Like they gave that the Chinese like the honorary chief, and people are like, man, look at the Chinese taking over in Nigeria. I was like. Do you know how much money he paid for that? For that? Are you kidding me? You think Nigeria is just gonna hand Arabs some citizenship? No. Nigerians, Nigerians, they can be quite protect. They, they can exhibit some kind of protectionism. Actually, Nigerians can be a little bit funny. And if you look at the way they talk recently, if our president recently was saying, you know, there are some foreign people that are trying to destroy the country, and saying that because of that, the oil that they found in the Chad basin. Nigeria has not been able to extract it because they are just coming there to steal all the natural resources and the oil and everything from there. This is a president, a Nigerian president saying this that stayed in London for more than six months getting healthcare treatment. So some Nigerians can be protectionist to an extent. If you look at that's why we don't have a foreign military base in our country. Um the, the lands in Nigeria is 97% controlled by Nigerians. So many things in Nigeria is Nigerian. And um, so they, they do exhibit some kind of, compared to other African countries, you know, like Kezu. Kezu is here, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. They, they, they gave, a, you know, a very, very large piece of land to British military. And then they said, that's not enough. We need to give to their cousins, the Americans, to give them another big one but again. No, I said, no, I said, hold on, hold on. Let me read this. Let me read this from Jama. This is funny. Jama said, Afridamus, do you think maybe the black Americans will claim their Africanness once they taste our camel milk and bush meat. Just maybe there is hope. You know what, Jama? I think I, 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 I'm with you on that. Once the blacks start, you know, trying, you know, the camel milk and bush meat, there's no doubt in my mind that, you know, they would, you know, start claiming African stop, you know, being Indian. You're right about that. I'm sure the you camera know, you will really yeah. convince them, though. You know that. You know that. You, you know. <laughs> camera urine is not going to convince anybody. No, no, the milk, not the urine. You know. Mm, I mean, yeah, we yeah. Get, we gotta take it slow. We can't introduce them. To <laughs> no, no, camel <laughs> urine is nice, man. I've tried it. <laughs> You guys are crazy. Yeah, no, no, the, the no, profit, camel, uh, uh, camel urine is you drink when you, have, oh when you are sick. You know, when, you so when you are sick, you know, it's like medicine. You mix it with medicine. My Somali yeah, brother yeah, is right. Quiet, Kaizo. So, you so, so, yeah, so, camel, you so, 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 yeah, Kaizo, you were saying something about the camel urine. I think, you know, yeah. like. It's a medicine. Yeah. It's a medicine. Yes, it is. I, I read about I heard. <laughs> Yeah, people, it's not funny. Know, when, it's easy like to that. say that, but that when you see it, it's not funny, man. <laughs> you know how those <laughs> that is. You know, you, you know. know how... <laughs> we have to learn from each other. You know, the culturally. You know, we African, we need to learn from each other, right? We yeah, have to yeah. Learn our history, yeah. our culture. You know, we are. You know, we need to integrate first our cultures. We need yeah. to learn from each other. Then we will know about the vast majority of us. We don't know it from each other. That's why yeah. we talk shit. We talk back about each other because we don't know each other. Yeah, you know? true. That's hey, hey you know what's funny? Different. Why is it that like people like on sweet tea here, right? He said, "I know I have West African in me. I am not claiming Native American heritage. Just don't want to reconnect. That's all." Uh, on sweet tea. I think you want to reconnect, okay? If not, why are you here around Africans all the time? Come on. You love being at the African barbecue. Just call it what it is. If you want camel milk, let us know. Or you want camel piss You know that. Let that us know that as well. You know he that, he that loves that. being around Africans. So welcome mm. to the African barbecue yeah. Yeah, on sorry. sweet tea. Go ahead. Absolutely, absolutely. You see, those who claim that now the guy yesterday you're talking about, right? He said uh, in Africa you don't have ice cream. Actually, that's why he gained weight. That is, he was 400 pounds. And <laughs> you know, you, you know, wanted so, ice cream, ice cream, and ambulance. So, have, so, 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 so he wants he wants to make sure, okay, that one you know once he he raises his blood sugar up, it's like okay. 
uh, let me not stop my diabetes, but he wants to make sure the ambulance can rush him oh, to the yeah. hospital when he gets a diabetic episode. That's why he's asking for those two things. Think is about he it, right? A, he's not asking for vegetables. He is I mean, asking so, for ice cream. Ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know that. That he poor guy. Modern, you know, there is a modern Africa, right? Like uh, right. Nairobi, Nairobi, Abuja, uh, you know, uh, Banjul, uh, Dakar, Lagos, uh, you know, New Ashok. There is many cities in Africa. This like, It's just like modern uh, cities. So where the person lives today, even social media, there are a lot of YouTubers. They've been there. They have seen that. So ice cream is already there. Everywhere you go, there's ice cream. So I yeah, but not not Turner, not Turner, didn't know. He, you know, like he trust me. He's not. He's not even messing around. He he didn't even know. Not, believe me. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, not Turner did an orders because he's like older. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, like you'll be shocked by. You know, like he wasn't even trolling. He did. He no. doesn't know. Believe okay, it or not. Can he say? Can he say to a white man that he's Indian? Um, can he say to a white man or a to, white, to white, man? white man? No, the yeah. white. Uh, well, well, uh, you know, that's what the blacks like to say that to other blacks. Mm. Yeah, yes. they don't care about I'm telling it to. to they don't care. They don't care about telling it to the white man. They like telling it to an, other black, whether you're. You see, like, okay, even though you know this, now Turner kept saying, you foreign blacks, blah, 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 but he still would prefer, he would enjoy to say it with us than to go discuss it with the whites. That's just the observation. <laughs> he, he doesn't, he doesn't care. He doesn't care discussing this with the white man. He see, wants, he wants to discuss the, he wants to discuss this with us. <laughs> You know, there is a museum here in Washington, D.C. Uh, there's a Native American museum. Yeah. You, you only see, uh, you know, those kind of, uh, you know, uh, the Native Indian. They, they, oh, yeah. They, I've, they I've been to like, museums. I, exactly. Uh, trust me. I know. They I don't, know. You it, don't see uh, someone who has African future. There's, you cannot see that. You know, so even those uh, Native... Wait, wait. Native Rashid. Rashid, is that your... Are you trying to low-key tell me my Blackfoot gene is not... <laughs> like, 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 what is this all about? Catch Al, are you, are you, are you, are you, are you peeping that you know Loki? Like, he's Loki throwing sharks at me. But you said you had a DNA, so we want to know the proof of your DNA. Also. Okay, fine. <laughs> yes. I mean, all right, fine, Rashid. I, I can take it. Go ahead. Yes. So, you see those, so the you see, the Africans. Uh, this, I even heard that the natives. They used to have in the slaves. They used to have African slaves in back True. in the days. So they they also uh, so those who live with them they adopted them as their people, but they are not uh, native Indians. You see, they adopted them as their later on they become part of their their culture, but that, that but they are not native Indians. They've been enslaved the the Africans. So so in this way. And they are not, they, they, they have, you know, that's why you have African, that's why they, they carry this name African-American, right? That's why they have African-American. So because they are African, uh, uh, part of them are from, Af you know, they are from Africa. They are the African descent. Well, I mean, did you, <laughs> you know, I'll have to bring that topic again because I want Nat Turner to come again. And, oh, no, and, no, no, no. <laughs> And and defend it because uh, you know, or maybe we'll just keep Nat Turner in the chat for for that one because he's already. I think Nat Turner is scared to take the DNA test. You remember, I asked him the question. I said, "Is he afraid that it would show Nigeria?" And in yeah. his mind, he thinks they're gonna send him back. <laughs> he he didn't deny it. Have you guys know? Hey, catch up. Have you guys noticed he didn't deny it? Remember. Yeah, I remember yes, that. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, he didn't deny it. You ever seen that? Um, you see, uh, you see that the African American now they took advantage. You ever seen that you show know, Boondocks? It's opportunity. Yes, it's opportunity. You remember when they had the, the one with Uncle Ruckus? Yes, DNA test. 
Yes. And it came out, he was like 99.9% .9 African, but he couldn't. <laughs> 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 I know. <laughs> so the powers that be had to go behind and get the doctor to redo it for him. Yeah, yeah. I feel like it's going on. Remember when he died and went to heaven and met Ronald yeah, Reagan? Right. He said, "He said I'm 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 so thankful there's no darkies around here." <laughs> wow. <laughs> that, that was Nat Turner, man. I was trying to support my brother, but that was him. You see what oh, what make you what you what what are you gonna benefit by say, saying that he's a native uh, Native American? He, he, well, can, he won't benefit anything. But even he's African American, even he go back look, to many. You see, many Black American now went to Africa. Look, I remember, right, <laughs> Rashid. I remember a time when I like any, especially the Black women. If you meet, them, they are all. Literally, mixed not all, but they. When you meet them, you ask them. They are all mixed with uh, Indian, like Cherokee, or you know, one of those tribes. And also, they used to claim white people. They used to claim Irish and German. So that's all played out. Now they cannot claim it because everybody became woke. You see, <laughs> but <laughs> no, really, they became woke before. Before, before the DNA used to show, according to the people, they would claim I'm part German, I'm part Irish. Some would even throw French there. But now, have you noticed now that it's not cool to claim the whites? Now, nobody's DNA shows white. Believe <laughs> no one's DNA that. shows white. So that's why I'm looking for my Viking ancestry. Okay. Okay. If there's a DNA master out there okay. who can, okay. you know, do great. give me a good DNA. And make sure, and make sure that it shows me, you know, puts me in Scandinavia somewhere, you know. Please let me know. There are many now. There are many people in the world now today. They wish they had African DNA because when they go back to Africa, there is a land where their climate is always good. There is opportunities, many opportunities in Africa. You can you can have big land, big house. You know, like you live, people live there like a kid, like you know. So that's what many African American, when they went back to Ghana, they have seen this kind of cheap land, a nice weather, no. a nice food, organic food. So they were really, they were missing out. You see, but to claim you are native Indian, what, what, you, what are you gonna get from? Nothing. What are you gonna because get from? because he's not. That means he's not African. Even the Native American, they are in reservation. They have nothing. In the reservation, what they what they get us to become uh, natives, they live in uh, reservations in Colorado, in uh, you know in uh, New Mexico, you know they live in in uh, in uh, slums in uh, in uh, ghettos. So yeah. to be to, to I, be an African, I, I you get right opportunity quick. to be to go to Africa. Is there's opportunity because Africans are welcoming you, saying welcome my brother, welcome uh, Akwaba in Ghana. They say Akwaba. In, and, and you see how they live now in Ghana. They they opening a restaurant, like the One Africa Love, One Africa, something like that in Accra. They live large. They have big houses. The, the house that they never dreamed in America. I have seen a lady in Ghana, she built a big mansion house in Ghana that in America will cost her four, three, two million dollars house. Maybe in, Africa, in Ghana she built $50,000. Okay, guys, we got to do our closing statements here. We've been here almost four hours. So uh, yeah. please, uh, let's do I know it's been, it's been a minute, but, you know, uh, <laughs> well, I'll, have to, I'll, I'll have to bring another one. So, guys, uh, let's start with your uh, closing Is Rashid statement. Ethiopian? No, no, Somali. Yeah, no, no, Rashid is wow. Ethiopian. Yes, yes. He's, oh, oh, he's Somali, just, he's, he's Somali. Oh, the yes, Rashid yes. is Ethiopian. He just don't want you to know. <laughs> no, no, no. no, no, no. <laughs> I'm just messing with you, Rashid. <laughs> don't worry, yeah. yeah, that's yeah. good, actually, because sometimes I would, if he was Somali, I would have said, wow, that's interesting to hear. Yeah, Somali sound the way he sounded. He sound He's Somali, more. yes. Hey, you know, he's Somali. I'm, he's I'm, very I'm, level -headed. I'm older, you know. I'm older. Mm. So those, those, those are youngsters, you know. So they they yeah. talk bad about they don't know a lot of about the, the, about the history of Africa. So, so, but Rashid, don't you think they should give the blacks citizenship in Ghana since they are doing so much there, so they, they can absolutely. have the rights? Absolutely. Okay, They're I'll do I'll do them. a show on that. They, they you know because to give them citizenship because yes. those who came 
they're supposed to get citizenship right you know absolutely this is, yes. this is true okay let's let's close out go, uh, go ahead uh rashid okay uh, uh my closest actually we'll have two niger start because you are from east africa eastern yeah, block so you want you want you want catch out would would go after two niger two niger this is not a, your show or this time or you just a guess tomorrow true, true. When I do the West African <laughs> <Tunisia, you can, laughs> and, the, and the black show Tunisia, you yeah, can let me come. Do my, my closing. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, we have. Thank you very much, uh, for Damas, for you know bringing out a lot of African history that we didn't even know. Like John Ekolo, uh, we didn't know about his uh, history. And last time you brought up uh, history of uh, you know uh, I very what they call that. Country, uh, America, uh, America, 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 yes, America. So thank you very much for bringing out uh, the African, uh, uh, you know, uh, heroes, that and uh, to, to learn about that, and uh, and I believe that Africans we should uh, learn from each other. You know, I, ha I have to learn the history of Ghana, the history of Nigeria, the history of Chad, the history of you know every African country. So we will respect each other. You see, European they know each other uh, each other's history. That's why they don't have. They don't have, they don't say bad things about each other. The right. Italian never say shit to 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 France people. The France never say bad things to to German people because they know their history. They know their history together. So we you know, need... you know, Rashid, Rashid, do you think us Africa we're just ish talkers? <laughs> like yes, we talk okay. bad about each other. We we say bad things. No, but do you think they just like talking ish? Like they don't really, they're not trying to be mean. Oh, you no, think they, they really mean. They really no, they're mean. being mean. Okay. okay. Yes, they're being mean to each other. Mean to uh -huh. each other. We have no You're respect right. to each other. Yes. We don't respect each other. We say bad things to each other. We we don't respect... Actually, the Europeans, if you go to a discussion where the Europeans have uh, talk shows, they don't... They respect each other. They don't... Oh, no. Oh, no. no. Rashid, Rashid. The Greek I'll have, to, I'll have to push... Greek. I'll have to push back. Okay, maybe you say Europeans, but I trust me, I have seen white shows... Uh, on on youtube but they, they would say, put, you know, you, look you look i'll you tell you oh you trust me you. no white people show there are white people shows more dusty than the dustiest mm. african shows I, I, like they say the wildest things to each other too like i, I was just <laughs> listening to a show a couple of days ago uh one white person calling another one a snow monkey like <laughs> yeah so i'm but telling they, you are they white americans uh, or the european look my thing is i usually don't like to compare and say oh the white people don't do that but um they do that. i just believe people are people you know like no, us like africans we do we do our things in our own way but okay. you're right okay. it's you know it's good for us to understand each other yeah absolutely that's what i meant i meant yeah. that we need to understand each other and uh, I'm not like when I when I say when I took an example for European, it doesn't mean that I putting down uh, the Africans. No, I was just saying let's let's like respect each other, know each other history, and learn from each other. Right. And that's how I'm gonna end it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rashid. <clears throat> All right, go ahead to Niger. Yeah, thanks for having me, um, uh, Afridimas. And I think uh, Rashid spoke well and. Um, the, the fact that you are sharing some of all this history is good. I think there's, I, I'm seeing a, a bit of a shift in the way you are interpreting these things. Maybe you are discovering some hard hitting truths that <laughs> you need to, <laughs> that's going to shift your, your way of thinking. What um, do you mean? Yeah, because you seem to be approaching this stuff a bit more rationally these days, and which is how we're supposed to be questioning stuff and bringing stuff out that I, I didn't know about this history, you know, the, uh, John O'Kella, that you, uh, these are the kind of things people want to be hearing and seeing you call people out on stuff like that. So, but in the case of North Africans, I, I, the thing that we do, you know, it's not that different from what black people do too. Black, a lot of black people like to distance themselves from the continent. So, some Nigerians that run overseas, they, they come on Nigerian channels and start talking nonsense sometimes too. <laughs> really? So, yeah, yeah, they do. They do a lot. Of, huh? They do like uh, our country. This our country. Oh, that, yeah. our country that. Yeah, yeah, I've heard Niger that, Nigerians yeah. don't waste time on that. You're oh, right. Oh my God, they really bash Nigeria like crazy. Mm -hmm. So we do these things, and I guess it's just the only way you can understand it is that people like to associate themselves with uh, something that gives them prestige, you know, status and stuff like that. If Africa starts doing well, they will start embracing it, and 
there's some signs that Africa is beginning to, t you know, look better anyway. Um, for me anyway, not much has changed, but on the surface, it's looking yeah. better from, you know, Ghana, you know, Namibia, look at all the Tanzania. Very, very I mean, beautiful. There's a lot of improvements, a lot yes. of improvements, of but course. But the, the improvements, my concern is that the improvements is not founded on a solid base. And until that is, that, until that happens, I uh, would say now, you know, this is perfect. Nigeria, Africa is really good. And you can, anybody can go to Africa then and invest confidently knowing that that continent is as good as any to invest. Well, and, we, uh, got, so, we got the we got the Chinese these days. We, you know, so yeah, everybody is there now making money. We got the Chinese. We've always had the the whites, and you know, I'm putting in requests for them to ship more white women. So you know, we, 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 we're doing good. We're doing good. <laughs> they don't have enough white women to to <laughs> South African men. I can assure you of that. Um, so what? Are, what in the end, anyway? If, so I can go. Um, well, the white people got to pay reparations. So England and all, you know, like they are banning the English women from coming to Gambia. But you know, we'll take the other ones, no problem. <laughs> so, so all I'm saying is that. You know, it's going to take all of us putting head together to fix our communities, and uh, including the ones in America. There's no point fixing Africa when Americans are the African Americans are suffering, or the Brazilian Africans are suffering. Uh, we have to fix, help each other fix each other's community based yeah, on. I don't know about the. I don't know about the Brazilians to. though. What is wrong with you? What is wrong they, with them now? They speak Portuguese and uh, we don't have time to <laughs> translate that. <laughs> a lot of them speak English. That would be silly. Yeah. Well, they, better, better, they, better, they better start learning English fast and join the group. <laughs> we don't have... Them. I was watching them do some rituals about uh, the sea goddess of uh, the Yoruba culture just the other day. These people are hardcore, man. They're not even like African Americans that have distance. These people are still like holding on to their traditions. So yeah, that, that's yeah. true. I've, I've read something on that. Yeah, they are very serious about it. So it's going to take all of us, you know, and you are doing your bit. You are communicating these things. I've never had a Somali guy sound like uh, the Rashid, I must say. He sounded yeah, like no, Rashid is always here. here. Mm. Rashid, Rashid is on point, you know. Nice one. Thank you for having me, and uh, let me let everybody else go. Thank you, too, Niger. Thank you. Uh, all right. Catch out. Catch out. This is your month, Black History Month. The floor is yours. Close it. Oh, man, I forgot to tell ask to Niger to say something good about the Blacks, but that's another day. Go ahead. Yeah, I just want to say thank you um, for having this topic, because like I said, a lot. I didn't even know who this character was, never came across it, didn't even know that was going on. We always know Tanzania as Tanzania, not as, you know, two separate nations that came together. Um... But I do want to say that uh, as far as for my African brothers and sisters that are watching, uh, not all African-Americans are <clears throat> like Nat Turner for some strange reason. Y'all keep talking about Man, Nat Turner is an African. Leave Nat Turner alone. <laughs> he, 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 is a, he, he is a brother, but I understand. But I also know that uh, just to get, I just want to give a little light to the context that y'all putting them in, and mostly a lot of African-Americans, which is, we used to say we had Indian in us because a lot of them didn't want to admit that somebody in their family either got raped or messed with, with the slave master. So that's why a lot of black Africans, I mean, African-Americans used to say that. But as far as I also want to get down, uh, get, get this stereotype out talking about that. We're not trying to get back to Africa. We, that's not true. I mean, if you read our history, you'll see, it was a Jamaican, I forgot his, um, Mar Marcus Garvey, that was trying to get right. us to come back, you know. And a lot of us do, we we do want to come back. We miss the motherland. We want to get to know our brothers and sisters. You know, the past is in the past. You got to let, you know, we know our, our, our history. We're trying to build a better future. And if there's anything I can do for any African, I'm, go I'm going to be there for them, period. And that's thank the way you. it should be. So thank you for having this topic. Uh, God bless everybody. And I uh, hope to have, hope be able to speak to you guys again. All right, thank you, Catch Al. That was Catch Al. All right, guys, you guys see it. The topic, as usual, like I said, it was Jordan Okello, but as usual, is the Afridamus report. We would sometimes via off and throw certain topics and handle it. That's the African show for you. And I noticed that somebody, Bantu Queen, all the way from Kenya via Gambia, no, 
she's all the way from Gambia via Kenya. She's Gambian. So let me make that. So Bantu Queen is requesting, you know, the Black History Month national anthem. So I think I would close out with that today because uh, she put in the request. So let's see. Let, let me find your song for you here. Uh, Bantu Queen. Let's see. I think this has become her favorite song. She wants to she wants to hear about what the blacks have built, you know, in, in America. I mean, Bantu, don't hesitate to put in the request. I noticed that you love this song. Many other people love it. So put your dancing shoes on. Ladies and gentlemen, put your dancing shoes on because it's towards the end of the show. Let me find the song for you here. Give me a moment. One moment. Don't, don't leave yet. Just hang tight. Put your shoes on. Your dancing shoes. Uh, put that snack down. And here we go. I will see you guys. Peace. You a grown ass man. You call me to troll me. Did you get what you want out of this? Did it make you feel better now? There's a difference. I don't bother people I don't like. And this is what you have to deal with with niggas. What they built, what they did, what they gained. You want to live off somebody else's love. What they built, what they did, what they gained. You want to live off somebody else's love. Niggas are the worst people on earth. I do understand why they made them slaves. I think one of the worst things that happened was they stopped making them slaves. If they'd have kept niggas as slaves, we'd have built more shit. We'd have been better people. Whenever black people were under the oppression of white people, they did more. They were more productive people. Name the shit you built since being out of slavery. Name it. Name it. Let me explain. You claim you built D.C. You were enslaved when you did that. You claim you built the railroads. You were enslaved when you did that. Everything you claim you built in America, it's when white people had the whip on your ass. What have you built since? Come on, what have you built since? Nobody wants to talk about the facts. Now all you do is go around and begging white people for shit. All these hoods y'all proud of, white people gave them to you. You didn't build them. What they built, what they did, what they gained. You want to live off somebody else's love. What they built, what they did, what they gained. You want to live off somebody else's love. What they built, what they did, what they gained. You want to live off somebody else's love. What they built, what they did, what they gained. You want to live off somebody else's love. Did black people build Cabrini Green? Nope. Did black people build capital homes? Nope. Did black people build Carver homes? Nope. Did black people build O Block? Nope. Did black people build any of these things you're talking about? 63rd, 62nd, 69th? Did you build any of that shit? Nope. Did black people build Compton? What? Did black people build Compton? What? Did black people build Compton? Nope. Let me explain. Oh, uh, 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 Black Wall Street. Come on, bro. Oh, uh, 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 black Wall Street. Your ass ain't built Black Wall Street back now, have you? You got all these black millionaires and they, all these black millionaires who own clothing companies. You could have been built Black Wall Street back a long time. When you hear all these niggas love to go back to Black Wall Street, that tell you black people are lazy and ain't shit. This person said Black Wall Street. Sir, you remember what Black Wall Street was built under? Jim Crow. I'll let you know. What they built, what they did, what they gained. You want to live off somebody else's law. What they built, what they did, what they gained. You want to live off somebody else's law. What they built, what they did, what they gained. You want to live off somebody else's law. What they built, what they did, what they gained. You want to live off somebody else's law. What have you built? Give me the Black Wall Street 20 years uh, in the last 20 somebody years, last 10 law. years. Give me that. Y'all niggas can't put together some stores. Cause that's all Black Wall Street was, idiot. Stores. Else. 